from days of long ago, created by the cosmic legends of the universe. There stands one man, one great man, a man dedicated to preserving all that is good in pop culture. Loved by few, hated by many. Alone in his fortress of awesomeness, he battles fearlessly against the worst, the evil, the unjust. To right that which is wrong, to stand for justice, to serve all mankind. He is the one, the only, the Comic Relief Crusader. Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Woo! Boy! Oh, we got a good new show today. We got a good show for you today. A brand new show for you today. Especially on a titillating Tuesday. Enter the Geekosphere. Episode 76. Man, oh man, oh man. We're getting closer to... Damn, we're, we're like past... Three quarters of the way to 100 shows. Holy moly, I can't believe it. And I want to say hello to everybody that's on the YouTubes and on... Ah, what else am I on? Oh, my God. I, th I I happen to be on X, apparently. Supposedly. At least I hope it's streaming on X. That'd be different. And uh, and on Rubble. Hello to everybody on Rubble as well. How's it going out there? Um, you know, I am your host, the Comic Relief Crusader. And we're here for another exciting show today where we're going to be having some laughs. We're going to be just making fun of everything that's out there because life's too serious to take everything so seriously. And people that are out in the industry, they need to be... I think they just need to be mocked and shamed for every stupid idea that they come out with for ruining everything that they've just made, you know, like everything that they've made out there. It's just ridiculous, you know, and I know a lot of people have been talking about Star Wars, the Acolyte and all that kind of stuff. Eh, you know what? We knew it was going to happen anyway. So pff, next. So, you know, hey. That being said, I want to tell everybody out there, uh, you know, if you look at the description below, um, you know, we got a couple of things going on on this channel. For example, um, we got the people over at Flip City Magazine. And if you haven't checked out Flip City Magazine and checked out their link, you know what? Hey, now you can get like two issues to check out and peruse over and get a good laugh by Flip City Magazine, those guys. And in the description below, there's a link. And guess what? You can get a subscription to them, especially when you enter the coupon code CRC, where you get 10% off of Flip City Magazine's subscription for a year. And they make fun of, they're an equal opportunity make funner of. That's not a word, but I'm making it a word. So, you know, check them out and get a good laugh. And uh, God, they make fun of everybody on the left, on the right, on the woke, on the blue haired feminazis out there everyone that should actually be ridiculed in reality and on top of that uh pretty soon coming soon uh as far as i already know from what i've heard from al on a recent post it's going to the printers issue two sword of eden shinobi and if you haven't gotten the first issue go get the first issue this from an ex marvel dc artist the first book is out, and if you want a really good read, go pick it up, and coming soon is going to be the second issue. So if you want to pick up something really good to read or something really fun to read, then go hit the link down below. It's fun. It's a good read. It's something to, you know, spend a whole afternoon on and, uh, and, just, and just have fun reading a good comic, you know? 
but uh, but pretty soon the second issue is going to be coming out, so you want to pick that up as soon as possible. So that being said, check out all those things that are in the description. I'm sure all those people would greatly appreciate it. And I want to say hi to everybody that showed up in the chat so far. We got Rancor Steve. Howdy, y'all. Howdy, Rancor Steve. Uh, later on tonight, uh, going to be on his show on Manorama. Uh, me and the geeky classic leftist Tom as well. So if you want, go check out Manorama. So it's a really fun show about men being men and how men can take back our inherent birthright of manliness so go check his show out and we also got vince womack hail comic relief crusader that's also on twitter as well hail here too hail to you and we got wendy trauma warrior hello everyone i'm in full work mode today how's it going wendy nice to see ya so and we also got pop culture republic who i will be introducing soon and of course when vince womack is channeling his inner stone cold oh yeah there we go it's gonna be a fun show tonight he's got it going on and let's introduce uh who we got in the panel today shall we if you're blue and you don't know where to go to why don't you go where fashion sits Geeky Classic Leftist Tom, how's it going, man? All right, everybody out there, give me a hell yeah. Okay. Hell that's yeah. That's, that's my dad <laughs> stone cold imitation. Still one of the greats, but anyway, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Keeping busy. And uh, how about yourself? Good, sir. Awesome. I'm doing pretty good. So, boop, boop, oh, dude, I guess it is working on X. So, Gap After Dark on X, you are good at mocking and shaming, Mike. I am. I try my best doing that as well. So, that is cool that we're on X. I just shared it on X. So, there, I didn't know you could stream on X. Yeah. Another totally adventure, on X. And another play. Yay. Exactly. I went to experiment with this. So, it's like, all right, fine. It's working. And hail John Rendell, my fez brother. How's it going, man? Hail there, all you happy people and other creatures. Hail to you. But while I'm talking to you, I'm just going to give you a heads up. Um, if anybody wants to check out a good army flick, Land of Bad, really interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I watched it this week. I was like, it's just a good action flick, something to watch. Uh, uh, Russell Crowe's in it. Man, he's really an older guy now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what do you got to do to get attention around here? Um, I do a dance, but it's not that type of dance. That I should be doing, and people would be horrified. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and Vince Womack, hmm, I thought sort of reading was Adam's nickname for his, you know, the thing. Um, no, no, it's not. So, uh, Ray Lucard, is this the same theme for Manorama? Uh, now you're a man. I would have to let rank or Steve answer that one so if he's still in the chat and we also got a dj play nice we oh, i like that avatar that's cool i want to play nice I'm like... <laughs> and we also got pop culture republic ah. hello i didn't forget oh. about you oh it's all right i was just waiting patiently oh there you go another goes. great day we got another good go. show. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, as soon as you said that earlier, a really good show with Topo Gijo. And most people will be like, wow, you're old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you no, actually I, used I, the term I'm... feminazi. That's like, wow, yeah. that brings back memories. I know. I <laughs> live in the past. So <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I, I've never That's regressed. Right. I've just parked and stayed there. So I actually watched a video. Just a quick note. Uh, speaking on that, I watched a video recently on YouTube called "The Five Most Woke Films of 2023." Wow, oh, really? it's just fun to watch. You know, Indiana Jones is on there, and so many others. Marvel. <laughs> like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it was funny. It was a fun watch because it's just it totally breaks down how pathetic and oh, it would have to be the feminine. Like, no, there's great female leads without having to embarrass the man and uh, just stop. That seems to be the thing of I'm gonna now, have to watch uh, it now. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I was Oh my god, yes, totally do that. Uh let's see. So uh yeah, so we're broadcasting on three platforms. Holy man, and everything is like working well. So on, wow. on Rumble, YouTube, and X. Yeah, I'm color me shocked. And we got like wow, it looks like 29 people viewing. This is kind of amazing. Ooh. It's almost <laughs> real in a way. Yeah, it's yeah, really technology weird. is great when it works, huh? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Oh, and hail, John Patterson. Uh, well, if the shoe fits, might as well get comfy and stay there a while. Exactly. I plan to. So 
very hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, because I don't do anything half-assed. I use my whole ass. So, you know. But seeing how we're at the beginning of the show and 11 minutes in, let's get on to some stupid news. We got stupid news here for you today. And okay. this one, a buddy of mine, um, a buddy of mine sent to me uh, on Facebook. And um, Robert, Robert Gines, um, and he's like, he's like, you got to show this. This is hilarious. So, oh, I got 17 watching on X. Oh, God, how do you like that? I'm loving that. So, uh, I live so far in the past, I identify as Neanderthal. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much me too. So, because that way I can eat as much raw meat as possible. So, PETA doesn't give a, you know. <laughs> nice Green, nice red steak. Exactly. Oh, so, so far good. back in the past, we predate PETA. Yeah. They're not That's even a concern. Go. That's right. That's the way I live. So mm -hmm. so this for stupid news. Uh, yeah, like I said, a friend of mine, um, Robert, he sent me this, and I thought, oh, my God, this is, this is so funny. This is so hilarious. And so I'm going to be showing this. Um, so this... Carl's Jr. down in the States, obviously, for you guys, because we don't, I don't think we have Carl's Jr. up here in Canada, uh, leaks an internal video that depicts customers as hungry, mindless souls. <laughs> so I'm okay. like, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so, you know. Um, so I thought, okay, this this has got to be put on super news. Um, so Carl's Jr. Apparently, back in February, um, has cooked up flipping humor a flipping humorous campaign to make way for Free Burger Day, apparently, which was on February the 12th. Uh, teaming up with Austin based create, uh, creative agency Callan, the fast food chain released a series of leaked training videos supposedly aimed at prepping employees for the chaos expected when hungry customers swarm in for their free fix. So this launched the lead up to the Super Bowl and these mockumentary style clips disguised as humorous or sorry, serious corporate materials offered tongue in cheek advice on how to handle the ravenous hordes of burger crazed customers expect, uh, expected on the special day on February the 12th. Um, here we go. I'll let you have a look at this. <laughs> Hello, Carl's Jr. crew members. Free Burger Day is February 12th at Carl's Jr. The flavor of our Western bacon cheeseburger is unmatched. So I'm not sure why we decided to give them away for free to every person in America, but here we are. If the massive crowds of patrons get unruly, don't panic. Simply find the industrial grade Carl's Jr. Burger Saver fan. <laughs> Now simply use the provided touchpad controls to quietly activate the fan. <laughs> nice job! If that doesn't work, simply turn off the fan's power to more fan and easily blow the customer safely out of the restaurant and down the street. <laughs> Do not eat a more fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much fan. Oh, and it's God. only an option due to an unfortunate manufacturing error at the fan plant. Follow these easy steps and have a great free burger day, February 12th. Uh, <sighs> of course, that okay. would come out okay. of Austin, I'm loving Texas. That. I'm loving that. Okay. Hey, Ledrod. <laughs> Of course it would. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. way to treat your customers, Carl. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Lad Rod, how's it going? Yeah, I just nice want to eat a burger you, and turn my Great fan on. Make it. Yeah. Exactly. Figure. Wendy says, yeah, new type of trauma patient for me. Oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> it was the fan. Oh, my God. It was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was, was quite me. literally blown out of the restaurant. It was traumatic. <laughs> I blew its head off. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. So from uh, appeasing the hungry masses to mastering the art of burger diplomacy, 
Carl Jr. and uh, Carl's Jr. employees were put through their paces in hilarious ways, like the following. Junior crew members, don't forget, Free Burger Day is coming on February 12th when we'll be giving away our amazing Western Bacon Cheeseburger. Obviously, with our burgers being so flavorful and delicious, you're probably asking yourself, what do I do when a horde of hungry customers come storming into the restaurant hungry with an insatiable look for Carl's Jr. burgers in their eyes? I saw Lizzo. Great question. <laughs> do use a tray to defend yourself from their incisors. <laughs> don't Cover yourself in delicious Carl's Jr. sauces. Our sauces Ew. are amazing, and that will only tempt them to bite you. <laughs> Do take cover under a table and let the hungry mob run by. Don't be fooled by elaborate homemade disguises customers may use to secure additional burgers. Remember, free burger day is February 12th. Follow those simple steps and you should have a great Carl's Jr. Free Burger Day 2024. With any luck, it won't be your last. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is so awesome. <laughs> God. This is what commercials should be like nowadays. I swear exactly. to God. Yeah. Uh, Vince Wobach, yeah, there's a YouTube channel that focuses on getting stuff for free. Sadly, I can't remember its name. Oh, crud. Oh, uh -oh. my God. I'll give yeah. you a little tip, everybody. Um, we'll go ahead and read this one first. Yeah, uh, Ray LeCard, humor in the age of no more silliness. What? Yeah, exactly. I right. find if you subscribe to restaurants like own apps like McDonald's and stuff, there's actually hidden oh. free items occasionally, but you got to go through loopholes to get the damn things. Oh, yeah. big time. Big you time. Have to sign up here, do this at to get free fries. Like, oh, what? It's like it's oh, answer burger. this questionnaire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get this coupon the code for, just exactly. for a free Sunday or something. Like, yep. oh. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and this one about barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, trainees. As you know, Free Burger Day is coming on February 12th, and we'll be giving away our irresistible Western Bacon Cheeseburger. We'll have customers at numbers never previously seen. Don't panic, and never forget that our delicious barbecue sauce is your friend. Not only does it taste great on the Western Bacon Cheeseburger, it also provides you with a much-needed long-distance projectile to keep hungry customers at bay. Carl's Jr. barbecue sauce distributors are capable of traveling up to 28 feet, moving at a speed of 60 feet per second, strong enough to disable any would-be ravenous burger-seeking patrons. Remember to aim for their eyes. Hitting their mouth will only fuel their insatiable Carl's Jr. burger cravings. Once a customer is incapacitated, use a long claw or stick to calmly and carefully insert a burger directly into their mouth. Once the delicious flavors touch their tongue, they will return to normal. Oh Next, my God. present them with a napkin to clean the barbecue sauce from their eyes. For your eyes. Thanks. I have barbecue sauce in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. Okay. Okay. I'm These are genuinely fun. Awesome. Yeah. I want to go there. <laughs> they are. Yes, I do. So I have the same arc. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, my God. It is. This is comedy gold, right? Yeah. <laughs> Success. Success. <laughs> And those burgers look damn good. I'm sorry, they do. Oh my gosh, I'm all they do. That. Yes, oh, they're okay. Man. I've had them. Uh, <laughs> lucky, jeez. They're, they're fair, uh, the middle, and good. I've had better, but yeah, yeah they're yeah, not yeah. bad. Nice. Uh, and then, and then, and then, and then this final one, or as far as I know, this final one. So, hello, Carl's Jr. crew members. As you know, we are giving a free Western Bacon Cheeseburger at Carl's Jr. on February 12th. Customers will arrive hungry, mouth forward, teeth snapping, eyes looking for our delicious burger. Oh, you're Quickly and Karen. carefully, deliver a free Carl's Jr. burger directly in the mouth. Watch mm -hmm. out! Due to the amazing <laughs> burgers, people may try to secure more than one. 
<laughs> Often, they will try to use an array of sophisticated mechanical devices, such as the long clock. <laughs> they cannot tell the scoping stick. <laughs> or high power vacuum. If you see one, simply use the provided call to your issue circular anti cross off to easily disable. <laughs> Easy peasy! Please use close to your brain and circular saw with extreme caution or under the supervision of a train manager. Uh, oh my god. Yes. See, we need more. Com- I, I swear to God, we need more commercials like this. This is so good. Oh my God, yeah, I'm dying here. <laughs> and these are real oh, commercials, correct? Well, they're they're mockumentaries. Mockumentaries, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I don't think uh, these would ever be aired. I think they yeah, should. No. Uh, this is they something. Neat. I mean, you look at McDonald's. Anybody see that meme where it has McDonald's years ago and now, and it says it looks like a depressing people with old people in it now. Yeah, have you seen really? that picture? It's like it used to be <laughs> fun. Place. Oh, oh, it's pathetic, oh, and it's like man. there's no Ronald McDonald no more, no kid stuff. It just looks like a very sterile yeah. environment of boredom. And these these commercials harken back to the era that gave us "Where's the Beef?" Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. A fun place exactly. to go to a restaurant with your friends and family and just hang out. And, but, yeah, it's great. Uh, let's see, Gap After Dark. Yeah, Carl's Jr. is Wendy's. Also, is there Wendy's in Connectland? Yes, we have Wendy's. So, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We definitely got that. Uh, Lenrod, yeah, I got water coming out of my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. true. It's so true. So, yeah, promos for Free Burger Day. Yep, they were. Wendy, yeah, this may boost Carl's business. <laughs> I hope so. I I really hope so. So it goes on. Uh, alongside the mistakenly published videos, Carl's Jr. rolled out a fake uh, internal training website complete with quizzes and gags serving as the ultimate hub for aspiring employees of the month. Oh boy. Oh, I should do that next yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the piece de resistance was an apology video from Jennifer Tate, uh, K, uh, CKE restaurants, chef marketing, marketing officer donning a riot suit in jest as she prepares for the mayhem. Okay. Let's have a look. Recently, some internal videos from Carl's Jr. were leaked to the public. We're very sorry if they scared you or anyone you know. Yes, we are giving away delicious free burgers on February 12th at Carl's Jr. But rest assured, everything is 100% probably under control. So to America, I say, come get a burger on February 12th. And to my family, I say, no matter what happens, know that I love you very, very much. (laughs) Mommy loves you, Pookums. (laughs) <laughs> oh i love uh, this oh man uh a lot of brands say that they want great work but aren't willing to take the necessary risks to actually achieve it this was not one of those times <laughs> shares craig allen chief Con- creative officer at Callen. we presented some truly outrageous ideas and the brand team was willing to lean in at every turn in jennifer's case literally wearing a riot suit and acting in her own spots for the sake of comedy and storytelling you know what yeah this that's, that's pretty good this is smart marketing okay for somebody for for somebody that works like you know with with branding and and you know in graphic design and stuff like that this is gold this is comedy gold this is how you reach people right with with just simple fun advertising like this kudos yeah. to you carol jr man 100% that's the way it should be yeah take yourself too seriously no exactly right uh yeah gap after dark yeah uh pcr the beef is in the plans today yeah that's yeah true, yeah yeah oh my god it was it was it was just totally worth it whoa there my dude wendy's is not affiliated with carl's carl's and hardy's are the same at carl's west of the mississippi and hardy's east of it yeah oh, really yeah interesting I was about to say it didn't sound right to me but yeah yeah. Okay. Now we have a place um, isn't in the states. And, I think A and W is Canadian. That's a Canadian burger chain we have here. Yeah. And yeah. hell, don't wonder. Nice to see you, man. So, yeah. And the thing was, Tim Hortons, uh, I believe, bought Wendy's up here in Canada. 
Actually, no, Burger King. Burger King. Oh, Burger yeah. King. Yeah, Burger yeah. King. That's right. But uh, funny you should say, because there actually is a Wendy's next to uh, Tim Hortons next to me, which is like a, a song for, for some reason they just didn't move, but there's a Burger King down the street. But yeah, it was Burger King they actually bought into, which is... That's what it was, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I remember actually Obama like trying to shame Burger King for doing that, like way back uh, when. Tim Hortons isn't even Canadian anymore, so it's... Yeah. No, that's true. So, hey, Gap, how's it going, man? <laughs> We're like Brazilian. Hello. Wait, Hello. Yeah, pretty much. What's up, Appion? Hello. Sorry I'm late, guys. Oh. No, no, it's okay. I just totally lost track of time, and I'm like, oh, shit, it's 1230 already. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's one of those days. Uh, John Peterson, yeah, we have A&W down here, uh, too. They're part of the Yum Network. That includes KFC, Taco Bell, yep. and Pizza Hut. Ah. Yeah, I've, I've got it. Wow. Well, I've don't have one near me. I'd have to drive over an hour to get to the nearest A and W. Ah, there we go. Yum Network. Yeah. So there you go. A little bit of different stupid news for you guys out there, and uh, you know, and a good laugh to everybody out there. This, this, as soon as my friend showed me this, I'm like, oh my god, yes, I'm gonna have to show this. Yeah, it reminds me of the good. commercials. Remember years ago in the '80s, we'd have car salesmen doing commercials like that. You know, yeah. come down now. Like they just had fun. And so yes. that's, commercials need to be like that again. Just fun and stupid and silly and trying to sell a product. Exactly. Yeah. And tone down the feminine hygiene products by at least 70%. My God. <laughs> yeah. If I hear one more commercial about vaginal odor, I'm going to flip. No, what you do is you <laughs> save those for like the, 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 the daytime soaps and stuff like that when women are actually watching TV, then there. Uh, yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. but, yeah. but mind you, nowadays you don't know who's a man or a woman. So I guess it's all the time now. I think yeah. the last fun commercial I've I remember watching was uh, the Amazon Fire Stick with Gary Busey in it. Oh, really? I've never seen oh, that. that was a fun one. That's interesting. <laughs> so, Wendy, okay. well, we're we're taking a trauma patient to surgery. Everybody, have a great week. You too, Wendy. You too, have Wendy. fun, and hopefully, you guys will be listening in while you're fiddling around with the innards. So, <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Keep that patient <laughs> nice and calm. So that's yeah. his liver. Put it back. Okay. That's right. It's <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> God. Well, anyway, um, seeing how okay, so we got through the the funny bit here. Um, so X Men uh, ninety seven is his has come out, and um, apparently, I guess it's getting somewhat mixed reviews here and there and stuff like that. So. I personally haven't watched it, but hey, I'm just reporting the news, and there's so much to watch uh, right now. But uh, but apparently, this coming out from uh, Cosmic Book News, apparently, X Men '97 uh, ratings bomb on Disney Plus. Oh my! <laughs> I can't imagine why that would possibly be. So, anybody have any I'm, guesses? I'm shocked. I, I would not have imagined this. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh dear! Well, you but have apparently... some people online claiming it's oh so good, and like, well, yeah, that's... maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's the mix so, of you. It's weird, yeah. It is. Uh, so the numbers are for the first two episodes uh, released, which aren't as good as <laughs> What If? Oh boy! And what? Uh, see, and you know what? Here's the thing: I I did go through season two of uh, of Disney Plus's What If went through them all and they you know like in the comic at least you know it it, it presents you with like you know interesting twists and turns you know like i don't know what if uh what if wolverine um became captain universe or something like that what if spider-man got the infinity stones what if, uh, I don't know, like Silver Surfer stayed as the Herald of Galactus? You know, like interesting little twists and turns. And when I watched season two of What If, it just, it, I don't know. I just, I just found it really boring. Just really boring. It's just like one continuous story arc, yep. right? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It just really, I don't know. It didn't grab me as much as it has so um vince womack yeah no, oh x-men 97 has come out as what as crap <laughs> maybe i maybe. don't know so 
Um, oh, yeah. I haven't subjected myself to him yet, so I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, John Rendell, yeah, me. He's got no nose comic. How does he smell? Me, awful. <laughs> So a nice I, little call back to Monty Python. I was just going to say that. <laughs> so. No, I haven't had time to watch it. I actually, funny enough, when your entrance, I've been rewatching some Invader Zim myself. So can Ah, there we go. Zim, so it's been fun. Nice. So uh, apparently X-Men 97 looks to be another Marvel bomb on the Disney Plus streaming service, according to the ratings, which can be looked at as a big disappointment. Oh, say it ain't so, Disney. That's such a shame for you. I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, first, uh, I first got an inclination that the ratings weren't uh, all that good when, again, Samba TV didn't post anything. Now, Samba TV claims to have a better rating system than Nelson. So when Samba TV doesn't report the numbers, that means they're likely not good. And lately, they haven't been reporting on the Disney or Marvel numbers when they used to do it every time. It's the company wiki page says uh, Disney as an investor. Oh, really? Disney's an investor at Samba TV, which produces ratings. Wow. That's not, um, yeah. <laughs> that's not suspicious at all. No, mm. no can't possibly be. You know, no, why, and we're all friends they... with people in the Whisper Network, too. I bet you, yeah, probably, oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, John Peterson, yeah, that's the thing. What if was always supposed to be an individual stories all in their own with no arc between them? So, Dismar broke the formula, and that's what you get, exactly. Oh man, you know, it, and it's true, they're individual stories, they're supposed to be that basically gets wrapped up in like one issue, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, Lenrod seems rather sus. Exactly. It does, isn't it? So, but case in point, both Samba TV and Nelson didn't report any numbers for Doctor Who on Disney+, Plus, but the UK provided the numbers which revealed horrible ratings. That's true. Because that yeah. Christmas <laughs> special was just... Oh my God, that was the most horrible show I've ever seen in the history of Doctor Who. Like, I've seen some boring Doctor Who shows, but oh my God, this was just trash. Remember that I, list I was telling you about the five most woke things? That's actually on there too, believe it or not. Is, the is, is I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah. Doctor well, Who has been dead for me for some time. Oh God, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, you know, especially at the end, you know, taking this stupid clown hammer and hitting the TARDIS and it magically becomes two. It's like, what? That isn't even, that shouldn't even work. And a man <laughs> saying, oh, I'm just a white man. I'm not good. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With, oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds yeah. horrid. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Something a male Time Lord wouldn't possibly know how to do is give up all this power. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah. I gave up halfway through Capaldi's run. That's, I tried like one or two episodes of uh, Watch Your Face and yeah. gave up. Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, yeah. If, if I thought, uh, like, this was worse than Jodie Whittaker. Wow. That's basically it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Peter said, yeah, X-97 was undone by the change uh, to Morph being non-boundary. Oh, yeah, 100%. Right, right. Totally 100%. So, um, yeah, so Saba TV also didn't report any specific numbers for Marvel's Echo. I can't imagine why either. That was such a brave and just, just oh, my God, it was all about family. And, and especially at the end, how she was basically all the Jedi in one. <laughs> and told the kingpin how to how to just change his ways and become more emotional and you know and and, and oh and it's was... also the second uh memshiu series that made daredevil look like a moron yeah exactly and she was going to be the new queen pin oh god it's like really 
like you know and while echo made samba's tv weekly ratings list again no numbers mentioned and i believe made the nelson charts the week it premiered bear in mind that is for all five episodes released of course the following uh premiere week enko jumped off a cliff and didn't make any of the ratings charts yeah it was that bad oh and on top of that this article actually fails to mention that it was actually in reality six episodes but they trimmed a whole episode out making it five episodes on top of that <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's that's how that's how bad the chopping block got on that show like oh my god um vince womack yeah thanks the bbc variant in my country i haven't watched doctor who since matt smith took over and now i don't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't blame you i didn't mind matt smith i liked matt smith you know he i kind of grew into him a bit and capaldi i mean he had the potential to be a really great doctor yeah the writing failed capaldi i look at matt smith kind of like i look at uh peter davison yeah, taking over after Tom Baker, like yeah. Tom Baker was a hard act to follow. David yeah. Tennant was a hard act to follow. He was, yeah. No, I agree with you one hundred percent. Matt Smith was in the same boat to me. Yeah, no, and and that's a really good analogy right there because, uh, I mean, how do you how do you follow Tom Baker? And I think I think <laughs> Peterson just yeah, that's what I, mean, I grew I just, up on Tom, Tom Baker. That's who I grew up with. So. Yeah, yeah, that's my doctor. Yeah. And uh, Peter Davidson just had a, like, he wasn't bad, but it's like, yeah, how do you follow that? You can't. There's no way. Yeah. So it, his doctor is more like uh, reactionary. He didn't really take charge. He just reacted to things around him from what little I remember of it. Exactly. And John, yeah, you're right. Doctor who should be changed to doctor. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> doc oh yeah yeah oh there's there's oh there's a whole slew of jokes we can get into that yeah and yeah i mean i liked matt smith too gap you know yeah. he was he was really good you know he had a he had a quirky kind of funniness to him that i liked so some know. of his stories just didn't work though but i blame no. the writing yeah not him dinosaurs on a spaceship for one um, yes that was that was different <laughs> so yeah but anyway um yeah you know and just a reminder hey if you want actual episodes uh yeah don't get the 97 get the actual uh get the hard copies just go get the hard copies they're more fun so now are the x-men 97 numbers good on disney plus well here's the thing so let's take a look at the x-men 97 numbers which we get via variety uh who says disney filled them in the X-Men 97 hit 4 million views in five days. Well, that's great and all that, but, you know, what's the what's the TOTS number? What's the tune-out time for those, right? Are they actually going to, I don't know, name those numbers? Probably not, because Disney likes to hide them. Well, in a similar situation to Echo, that's for two episodes released, as the first two X-Men 97 episodes were released on the same day, on March 20th uh, of this year. So that averages to only 2 million an episode, right? So it's not 4 million views. If you're releasing two on the same day, well, then that's 2 million actually you know you got to do a little bit of the math so you know i mean that only makes sense right mm. yeah you know you're not getting four million you're you got two million watching two episodes so you know yeah. or how about yeah or how about this Variety says Disney told them X-Men 97 is the most watched season one premiere for a full length adventure series since Marvel's What If debuted in 2021. Well, Disney says a lot of things. I mean, for example, the Acolyte, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. most watched trailer, but it got the most, you know, thumbs down. <laughs> you know? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, 
uh, it got like what, like over three times as many thumbs down as it did thumbs up. Yeah, that's like saying, uh, "Gee, we're just watching this train wreck to see how bad it really was." Yeah, exactly. That's about it. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that's great. Yeah, you got two million views. You didn't actually get four. You got two. But out of just a heads up, by the way, to jump million. on your acolytes uh, thing. Acolytes yeah. now at one hundred eighty thousand likes. 548,000 dislikes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over over half a million? Oh, my God. Yep, people don't like it. See, I got the oh, thing wow. where I can see the dislikes. I, I added that extending, and I can see dislikes. So it's like, yep. That's, people oh, like that's where you cue the uh, J. Jonah Jameson laughing clip. Exactly. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Half a million. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't have happened to a better company. Exactly. John Rendell. Yeah, X-Men comic book characters. X-Men. Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> No, exactly. they're still men, but anyway, I don't guess. Yeah, John Peters said, yeah, Disney has uh, put out that they're going to do the what if treatment to Star Wars, calling it Legends. Yeah, I've heard of that too. So... I don't know how I'm going to be able to take that. And uh, Canadian Spider-Man, hey, man, nice to see you here, dude. Awesome that you're here, man. Um, like, seriously, though, Star Wars has so much lore to go on, of, and they're going to do something like that. Like, come off it. Didn't they already oh, do that with Visions? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Visions was actually good. You know? Yeah, I, letting... I, didn't, I didn't hate it. I thought it was no, good. I didn't hate I it. I caught a little bit of it. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, the first season, uh, done totally by, you know, Japanese uh, anime production uh, houses in Japan, I yeah. thought it was like a brilliant move. You know, they actually did something right. You know, you got a couple of um, 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 trigger episodes in there, um, production LG, you know, and then in the second season, um, mm -hmm. they went to other production places like, you know, around the world. So france and india and i think like south america and uh some of them were pretty interesting you know they weren't too too bad so yeah, yeah you know i didn't hate them whatsoever they were pretty good so mm -hmm. I, I i checked them out if i were you they were actually pretty well done so and they all got you know slightly here and there especially the um the one from india it does have its um cultural swing to it but I didn't hate it. So I thought it was a pretty interesting take. Hmm. Yeah. So, and it's actually, it's, it's actually better Star Wars than current Star Wars. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is. Which is oh, pretty man. sad. It is. So uh, it goes on. Well, only one episode of What If was released for its premiere back then. So that says the two episodes of X-Men 97 didn't beat out the one episode of What If Season 1. Otherwise, Disney would have said it did. So what Disney did say is that X-Men 97 beat out uh, Waju and the Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, which was another entirely mess of a woke show. Uh, which I covered like way back when about, uh, you know, louder and prouder. Oh my God, that was like horrible. Um, but has anyone actually even heard of those two animated shows? Uh, I haven't. And this is the X-Men and Marvel we are talking about here. So, yeah. If it's not even beating out that, uh, or, or if it actually did beat out that, then the ratings might be actually pretty low. And if uh, if it didn't beat the one episode of season one of What If, then that's probably even lower too. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, John says, yeah, Visions is good, but they aren't about established characters. That's true. Um, and yeah, it's 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 kind of like like what you were saying earlier there, John, about. Um, about uh, inf uh, what was it, Infinities or you know Star Wars? Hmm. It's kind of like like an alternate take, essentially. You know, yeah. of, of like separate stories. They're just basically anthology stories. So hmm. but they're still pretty good. Yeah, the old established characters aren't around anymore, and the new established characters uh, nobody wants. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, Vince Womack has the number. So 180,000 likes and 548,000 dislikes. (laughs) (laughs) For the Acolytes. Oh, my Lord. That is so bad. And they're going to release this. That's the crazy thing about it. They're actually proud of it. It's like, we love this series. It will do well. Uh, (laughs) We can't wait to put it out there for everyone to enjoy. Yep. And and guess who they're going to blame? The fans. Of course. Of course. The toxic fans. We're toxic. That's always the dickhead now. Yep. It's going to be us. We're the, we're the problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, and it's really bad. If they just hadn't gone down changing morph, like if they just had left him the way he was in the original cartoon, right? Don't change his appearance. Don't add any of this friggin' woke, retarded bullcrap of he's non-binary. Like, even in the original cartoon. And Appian can, more than likely, because he went through all the episodes, he refers to himself as he. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, Appian? Yeah. Yeah. You know? He could also turn into dinosaurs and shit, so. Yeah, exactly. We got to turn pronouns and everything now. It's like, stop with the pronoun bullshit. Literally be anything. Yeah. You know? He's like an upgraded beast boy. Except not just animals. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of overpowered because he literally he could turn into any other mutant and then has their abilities. Yeah. Wow. Kind of ridiculous. Well, it is. But yeah. but I mean, if they didn't change that el- that just just that one element of him, this probably just would have turned out okay, more than likely. Now, I mean, I'm not dumping on anybody that actually did like these episodes. If you like them, that's great. And all I'm doing, I'm just pointing out the news and stuff like that, that uh, maybe maybe things aren't as great as some people might think, you know? And, but again, hey, if you like it, you win. That's the thing. And I'm not going to put you down for liking something if, if you do like it, you know? I'm just reporting the numbers, basically, like that. And, and I do actually plan on checking this out. So, mm. you know, from what I've seen from some of the clips and stuff like that, I don't know. I think the animation just looks... uh, I'm going to say kind of subpar. Hey, they took away Rogue's booty. Darn them. Well, that too. Yeah. That bothers me the most about anything. Yeah. (laughs) I know, right? You know, more doesn't bother me as much as Rogue physique. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, let's face it, Rogue is just hot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she's, she's very pleasing to look at. Yes, I but I guess it's want. not a good thing. You can't look at women nowadays. Like, what? Nope. No, no, that's right. You have to avert the male gaze. <laughs> so. No, I'm human. That's why we uh, humans work. So. That's, that's right. Uh, X97 is at least loosely following the source material and covering things that did happen back then, says John. Yeah, uh, the, well, you know, at least they're doing that. Yeah, free rogues booty. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. When too tight is too tight. You gotta loosen up those uh those unstable molecule costumes. So, <laughs> so free the sweater puppies. <laughs> oh man, I love my chat. Um, so that also means any premieres for full series animation on Disney Plus prior to what if season one did better than X-Men 97, probably the Star Wars animated sh- animation shows. I'm guessing if that counts. Variety also point out animated shorts such as Star Wars Visions, uh, M.I. Gro- I Am Groot, and Zootopia Plus. I didn't even think Zootopia Plus was even a thing. Uh, are excluded from this count. Why did they do uh, better? I don't know uh, if they did. I did actually watch I Am Groot. So, and these are like little five minute shorts and stuff like that. And you know what? Those are actually, they're pretty decently done. So Star Wars Visions is amazing. I would, I would recommend that. And, and I Am Groot, they're just funny little shorts that kind of go hand in hand with the Guardians of the Galaxy Mm -hmm. movies, I would say in a way. So, you know, those are, if, if you're looking for small little shorts, 
then yeah, I would recommend I am Groot. They're they're not woke whatsoever. Hey, right there, perfect example. Exactly. It's like the beautiful oh. booty all the way yeah. to looking like Dylan Mulvaney booty. Like you. exactly. Hey, Dadman, nice to see you, dude. So uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, can't see the fourth on my phone. That's okay. You're here, and that's all that matters. Um, no, exactly. You know, I don't want slim down. I want classic rogue, the way she was drawn, especially by Jim Lee in the X-Men. They have to look like men now because it could... No, no, stop. No, exactly. You know, I, I want that that puffy, flowing hair and huge circles. That's we love the circles, the full moons. There you go. Huge, huge moon out tonight. I see a bad mood rising, and that's a bad booty right there. So, you know, that's right. God save Jim Lee. Exactly. <laughs> Dormammu. Yeah, free the cheeks. <laughs> Take my cheeks away. Yep. That's right. You know, because let's face it, when we were in our late teens, probably I'm going to even say, um, you know, early 20s, and we watched this. Yeah, we read the comics. We enjoyed the Jim Lee X-Men run. Uh, you know, as much as it was Uncanny X-Men and then X-Men on top of that. Uh, and we just loved the way he drew beautiful women. That was the thing, you know? Yeah, we were nerds. Yeah, we were ogling at comic book women. Yeah, doesn't matter, you know? There's nothing wrong with it. We were young and we learned. And you know who it passed the torch to, I find, is J. Scott Campbell. He draws yes. women very similar, too, and very erotic and very beautiful. and Like Danger Girl and all those. And I was a big yeah. fan of those. And, uh, but they're good stories, too. But, yeah, they were drawn like women. So, exactly. You know. And, you know, and it's not because, no, uh, you know, we weren't pervs or anything like that. We just admired the female form. That was the whole thing. That's so, called human nature. That's, what, that's right. You know? Yeah. Yep. Huge sweater puppies. Huge Not everybody sweater looked like puppies. stick figures. I mean, this is... I don't even like the de-evolution of the animation style. It's gone... It's regressed. Yep. Less detail, yeah. Ah. Yep. That's right. Yeah, and invested in Luberderm stock. Exactly. So... <laughs> It's true. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, uh Marvel continues to disappoint on Disney Plus. Yeah, that's why their whole entire uh Disney Plus thing is just is just tanking. So there was a ton of build-up for X-Men 97, which is a continuation from the massively popular 90s series. So maybe a week prior to its debut and the day before its LA premiere wasn't the best time to announce the showrunner had been fired. Yeah, which is news that we covered actually beforehand. What happened to him <laughs> with him injecting himself mm. in it? You know, ooh, I seem Oopsie. to recall it quote yeah of you know i walk into a room of people that have say different different genders and religions and beliefs and stuff like that but not one gay character so therefore i must inject myself into this show that could be a reason why maybe i don't know so it probably Yawn. was yeah and it probably wasn't a good thing to include a non-binary character where non-binary characters didn't even exist and change up Rogue and the others. Exactly like we just saw in the picture before. That said, those Marvel fans that did tune in and watched it did give it a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes uh, audience score. Um, when I remember actually Rotten Tomatoes was actually more of a boof kind of website than actually anything to be taken seriously so maybe it will have legs as word of mouth spreads nelson ratings won't be available for about a month so and that's what happens it seems to be happening that uh a majority of fans are done with marvel following phase four and phase five uh or as we call it the dark times 
which <laughs> was such a huge disappointment. And they're also done with Disney Plus streaming service, which has nothing good on it. And it's only the <laughs> Disney stands who keep subscribing month after month, which is why the ratings are nowhere near where they used to be when Disney Plus launched. It proves fans are tired of all the BS from these Hollywood clowns. And here, hmm. here. <laughs> there was a phase five. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I, I I must have missed it. So when was phase five? Like all I know is phase four started with the Eternals and oh, it's yeah, still that was going. Yeah, I don't yeah. think phase five has technically happened yet, even I don't think. So I think phase four just yeah, finished or just about. I mean, I got phase one and two on Blu-ray. I love phase one and two. They were fun. Oh, yeah. I eventually want to get phase three. I get the box sets, the special edition one for one and two is yeah. just the, the movies. But then, I want, you know, but yeah, after three, I'm done. I don't care about four. Screw that. Yeah. End game was the end point and they didn't yeah. know what to do after that. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, because every phase was preceded with a with an Avengers movie. And that's yeah. how you knew how the phases took place. Yeah, and exactly. so what? Now you have maybe a handful of, I don't know, second-rate Avengers or something like that. You know, you don't have an Iron Man. You don't have a Captain America. I mean, heck, at this point, you really don't even have a Hawkeye. <laughs> Not much of one. No. Um, you don't have Black Widow anymore. You know, you don't have any of them, really. They you don't have, have their, their version. They have, they have Yelena. They have... Uh, Sam as fake oh, Captain yeah, America. Yeah. They've yep. got you covered with the uh, Iron Heart and Kate Bishop and yep. all the Young Avengers right. now. Right. Oh, yep. and right. Iron, Iron they did tease the Young Ava Avengers in a, I Those think in the Marvels. Nobody wants. <laughs> yeah. You get and the, they still the, can't the, give us a damn Hulk movie. No. You get the dollar store uh, the, the characters, the second tier <laughs> characters. So. Oh, there you uh, go. Yeah, Hawkeye is selling soy milk now. Ah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I should have known that. Yeah. Um, John says, yeah, but the woke will say non-binary did exist, but they were forced into closets fearing for their life. Oh, they were not. No. But they will do that. <laughs> so uh, Vince Womack says, uh, yeah, and it's totally just coincidental that the generation after the uh, after the us or yeah, after the us close the US it's funny farms or after the US, yeah, close it's the funny farms, uh, insane asylums, all these non binary and whatever else came to be. Yeah, yeah, it's funny how that funny how that happened, isn't it? So now, now, me. wait, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll defend one thing, okay? No. Okay, okay, I've had actual trans friends who deal with trans, was it, um, uh, I'm blanking out right now. Um, gender dysphoria. But the new movement says that's not even a thing. No, no, gender dysphoria is just fake. It's not real. And now somebody who has mental health, who has gender dysphoria, they tr transition when they're older and they're happy with their lives. They don't want to be known. They keep quiet and they, they want to just assimilate into their life and they want to live happily. So yeah. somebody like that, they're not against all the agenda. They're against a lot of these agendas. Now this transgender agenda, and see, transsexual is one thing. Then the transgender movement is just indoctrinating children, and it's disgusting, and it doesn't even involve anything, and it's just creating separatism within even the community of the LGBT community, and it's pathetic. So there's a yeah. difference between genderism and transsexualism. There is a difference. So, And it's a very rare thing to have in this world. That's why when you have, oh, our whole family is transgender. No, you're not. You're just mentally messed up. Yeah. Hmm. But you know what? Like I said before, if if you're going to watch X-Men 97, um, you know, and if you enjoy it, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> then that's that's for you to enjoy. And that's OK, you know, because, you know, and I, and I know I'm kind of taking the phrase from another YouTuber that does, uh, you know, figure reviews and stuff like that. Uh, you know, but but he's right. If you like it, well, then you win. So. <laughs> But amen just, to that. I'll, I'll back. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt there. I'll back you on that 100%. Like, we, we might make our comments. We always have our view. But if you like something, then enjoy it and good for you. That's yeah. what counts in the end is being happy and enjoying what you watch and entertainment. Exactly. But you know what? Um, like I said before, you know, hey, as on this channel, I just report the news 
And uh, like I said, yeah, I'll probably watch the the first two episodes and you know see whether or not I do like it or or, or whatnot. You know, all I can just tell you is from my experience, I haven't watched it yet. And uh, but some of the animation to me looked, you know, kind of choppy, like um, kind of like the the what if episodes. It's it's not, it's obviously like computer animated. That much is for sure. You know, and they're using this uh, this cell. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, um, like cell shading kind of uh, kind of animation, and it just looks. It doesn't look. It doesn't look animated. You know, like pen to paper kind of classic animation. It just doesn't fit. No, and we make fun of the, the the rogue booty thing. I mean, yes, we like it, but let's be honest. The animation actually looks like it's taken step backwards. It looks like it's less. Yeah, it's less it's defined. Less, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's regressed. Exactly. It's like yeah. Eh, it's and you're right, Vince. Yeah, yes. And everybody has his or her guilty pleasure shows or movies. Exactly. Hey, I like you know? Ahsoka, but everybody else here didn't like it. But I liked it. But <laughs> oh, that's all right. I'm not going to rain on your parade. <laughs> and and no. you know what? I like Highlander too. So there you go. I know a lot of people mm. crap on it. I, I actually like, like it. I I the, greatest, the greatest B movie ever is Hawk the Slayer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I Jack I Palance chewing up the scenery like nobody's business. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, guys in the chat, you know, whether you're watching on Rumble, whether you're watching on X now, or or on the YouTubes, you know, I'm I'm my job is not to tell you what you should like and not like. Okay, I'm just reporting what's going on out there, and th and that's all there is to it. So, you know, um, there, yeah, Rooker Hauer, yeah, Hobo with a Shotgun, yes, <laughs> that was actually yeah. filmed in Halifax, eh? That was filmed in Halifax. Yeah, Rooker Hauer in Blind Fury. Yep. <laughs> I like you too. I'm gonna have to rethink our friendship. <laughs> I like oh. the movies. I did. I liked all the Highlander movies. So I did too. I did yeah, too. They were fun. I was young. I didn't know. I didn't give a crap about. Yeah, yeah. Either. Even the Highlander series and the series span off. Uh, yeah. Whatever it was. Now I'm curious right. where they're gonna go with the next film. We'll wait and see. And mm -hmm. hail Killer Rabbit. Nice to see you here, man. How's it going? Hello. Hope you're doing well. Please don't kill us all. Um, so, yeah. So, X-Men 97. So, that's what's going on. Apparently, it's not the big rave that allegedly uh, Disney's making it out to be. So, there we go. <laughs> so, that being said, let's take a brief commercial break before we get on to the next article. Your crackers crumbling under the weight of regular peanut butter? Are you tired of your cracked crackers? P2000 Cracker Spackle is a heavy-duty, high-viscosity quick set answer to all your cracked snack woes. Our compound gets into the deepest recesses of your cracker cracks for a mess-free, nutritious snack that everyone will enjoy. Call today for the special price of $19.95, but wait, call in the next two seconds and receive the patented mini spackle knife for your tiniest cracker snacks. And the commercial is done, and those two wow. seconds are gone by, and you will not get your crack spackle knife. So I so. want it. So it's a what now? It's exactly <laughs> like the knife from Clue. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh man, cracker spackle. Gotta enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, the crackers are always a mess, and you're like brushing off the junk, and you're like, "Oh, that would be such a good idea." <laughs> that's right. It would be. But then again, it? that's what cheese whiz is for, though, too, because that can be considered. Yeah, that's oh, true. Cheese yeah. whiz. Yeah. <laughs> cracker spackle. Yes, John. It's cracker spackle. So it's edible cracker spackle. Cracker so, spackle. It sounds like a bad prawn movie. Anyway, it does. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> oh my god. That's right. Yeah, just one step removed from a Ritz Bits. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and hey, Epi 4H, how's it going, man? Nice to see you, dude. Great Hello. that you're here. Hello. But yeah, it's it's you know what? It's like currently showing me like you're like we got 22 viewers on X and and 11 on, on the YouTube channel. So yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching on 
on on Rumble or on X or on YouTube. This is this is actually a new pretty stream. Cool. I know, right? So I didn't actually think that this would work on X because, you know, you I, I thought you would need like, uh, you know, like one of those official blue check marks or anything like that. Oh, and wow. huh. apparently you don't. So there we go. Now people can uh, entirely get their fill of me on X being even more annoying than I already am. So there you go. Uh, uh yeah, cracker spack pool, uh whipped cream cheese with chives. Oh, there you go. Exactly. Yum. Uh guilty pleasure movie for me is the man who knew too little with Bill Murray. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's a good one. I haven't movie. seen that forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, exactly. Uh yeah, X-Men on X platform. Mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> How well that planned out. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh on to the next article. <laughs> Okay, well, the next article, uh, going to be getting a little bit into comics here. And um, what's what's going on in the comic world? Well, here's the thing. Um, right now, uh, there's a bunch of former Marvel and DC writers uh, that are getting uh, G.I. Joe comic assignments at Skybound Entertainment. Now, some of you people are probably going to be like, okay, what's Skybound or what's Skybound uh, Entertainment? They're the guys over at Image that now have the G.I. Joe Transformers license that's going on right now. Hmm. And if you haven't checked out the first six issues of Transformers, um, I'm just going to have to say, wow, it's a really, really good read. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, this was after what uh idw closed lost the they, yeah they lost the license okay yeah yeah they lost the license and uh and now it's over at image uh with skybound entertainment and um i'm gonna have to say that these guys they're writing it the way it should be written like really really good and at first hmm. i didn't think i was going to like the art in it when I first picked up uh, Transformers number one by these guys, but it grows on you. And the, the artwork is done in such a way you can actually literally feel the action. Like you really feel the action that's going on in this. And um, so far I'm quite pleased. I mean, right now they got obviously Transformers out uh the one that started it all it seems like they're taking a little bit of a break with that i don't know why uh which is void rivals which is part of the whole energon universe uh duke is in its third issue right now and i think so is cobra commander and they're writing everything into it like you know even from like the gi joe the movie and and all that stuff and um it's 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 got good action, like really really good action. So far, I'm not disappointed. Um, John Randall, let me guess. GI Joe becomes GI. Don't know what gender I am. <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> isn't isn't Snake Eyes a woman now? I'm hoping not. I don't think so. So far, uh, from what I gather, he does talk. So I don't know if they're going to make him lose that ability pretty soon because obviously he does not talk snake eyes doesn't talk whatsoever um yeah vince womack yeah can confirm the new series is really good it is it really That's really is here yeah uh i know somebody who did a gi joe cover he's a great artist uh there you go say yeah you know thanks gab um uh john Reynolds did not say gi jane or will smith will come and slap you there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> But um, this makes me a little nervous. Um, so Live for Film is listing some more miniseries sharing notable characters from the G.I. Joe at Skybound Image, uh, the new license adapting Hasbro's toy franchise. And I couldn't help but notice some names were given for writers assigned to characters like Scarlet, because that's the next um miniseries that's going to be coming out scarlet and destro mm. so they're kind of like doing it in such a way before they set up the whole gi joe line of comics by 
releasing little mini series of the well-known characters like duke and obviously cobra commander so they're doing good guy bad guy and then good guy bad guy which is going to be scarlet and then destro coming out so kind of smart uh, like, it is and that, then they bring them all together like an avengers type thing where you got yeah. to know each hero you know know their backstory so then you understand who everybody is when they are a big mm. team together that's pretty good yeah it is pretty good and the way to do it yeah sneak- and the thing was, I was never really a big G.I. Joe fan. You know, my brother mm-hmm. was. and But so far, I'm really enjoying these reads. Like, I'm really, really enjoying the G.I. Joe comics. So, wow. yeah, they're actually That sounds good. Stuff. I'm going to have to check these out now because it's what little I've seen of new stuff it leaves me wanting. It's like I, I don't care for new comics nowadays. Mm. Yeah. So, but... Um, from what I understand, these are like actual fans of the franchise, of like the cartoons and stuff like that, that uh, so far have been writing this. So, you know, like I said, so far I'm not disappointed. Now, uh, Red Hot writer Kelly Thompson, maybe some of you guys out there might know that name or you might not. She did Black Widow and Birds of Prey. And with artist Marco Ferrari, who did Frontiersman, introduced some of the most anticipated characters to the Energon universe, which is what they're calling it, in ways you'll never expect in Scarlet Number 1, which is coming out on June the 5th of this year. So, and like like I said, the artwork, it tends to grow on you. It's, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and so far... So hmm. far, I'm I'm not disappointed by this. I'm really not. And I mean, I haven't picked up an image comic in forever. And yeah, yeah and I'm really wanting to get these. So, uh, Epi4H, uh, off topic, I spent the last three hours trying to combine MPG Trainbots Raiden. Oh my God. I want to throw this thing across the Grand Canyon. Oh my God. I know. I'm sorry, dude. I am so sorry that you got mm-hmm. MPG Raiden. It's it's basically Takara Tommy's first uh, official masterpiece combiner uh, for, for those of you guys that don't know. And um dude if you want i got the i got the first three moon studios uh raiden trans bots or uh, train bots i mean uh if you want to go if you want to get those instead uh hit me up on um on x and i know a guy that can get the last three for you because those are actually way better and hail titan how's it going um if you missed the first five issues of transformers they're releasing it as a trade paperback in april or may awesome mm. dude it's oh my god it's a nightmare <laughs> god i'm so sorry man so so yeah so this is coming out in june now thompson was involved in some of the worst developments at Marvel and DC, like the woke approaches to Carol Danvers in the comics, because she had to be like Jennifer Walters. She had to be the first Captain Marvel. And, you know, apparently in one of the comics that were put out recently, apparently she went back in time and was the reason that the original Captain Marvel got the Negabands and became Captain Marvel. Hmm. It's yeah, it's like so bad. It's so bad <laughs> because she had to be the first, uh, and that's why this new take on Scarlet will have to be viewed cautiously because who knows what Thompson might have in store. I'm also decidingly not happy about the emphasis put upon the villains here, being Destro, who's the subject of a mini series. So what Dan Waters writes, I'm incredibly excited to bring Destro to life with uh, Andre. This is going to be a visceral, explosive thriller in which he, Destro, isn't very nice to anyone at all. Anyone you'd think. <laughs> and, and Yeah, really? He's a villain, isn't he? Yeah, he's an <laughs> arms dealer. For His God's name sake. is Destro. It's almost yeah. destroyed. <laughs> I know. Right. Missing one letter. <laughs> but it's a really nice guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just misunderstood. Yeah, he's misunderstood. Yes. Everything you'd want from your favorite amoral <laughs> arms trafficker. Like, <laughs> really? 
Oh my God. Is this going to be one of those subvert your expectations sort of things? Probably. And I'm really hoping not. <laughs> like, oh my God. I hope they actually write an actual. Oh my God. It's going to be visceral and it's supposed to thriller of. <laughs> God. I just can't wait to see what Dan has planned for Destro, says Andre Brissan. I'm pretty excited because everything going on here with the Energon universe has so far been bonkers. And Destro, he's just going to be an absolute badass, ready to kill and destroy. Oh, destroy. Well, nice. Oh, destroy. <laughs> wow. Destroy. Destroy. But he's a really nice guy. I want his origin oh, story yeah. to be like Sid from Toy Story, you know, like he's just. Yeah. Torturing toys and setting fire and <laughs> oh my god, yes, do it, do it. I would so want to see that. <laughs> it started with toys first. Yeah. One of them came to life and told me to be nice. He was a cowboy. <laughs> I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> hey, it's a time. Strawberry shortcake is. Packing a serious crossbow these days. Is this the new Wendy's promotion? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy very, should very do a pro- do a cross promotion with that. Like, yeah, she should. Wendy with the crossbow. Yeah, yeah. a very very nice crossbow. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it should. Oh my god, that's right. No, now put that no. thing back where it came from, or so help me. Oh my god, yeah, just do it. Um, and John, yeah, hey man, thanks for being here. Um, if you can't, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed yeah. already yet, uh, hit subscribe because it would really, really help me out as I'm edging slowly but surely closer to a thousand subscribers. So you know, I I would greatly appreciate it. And on top of that. You know, hey, you can catch the show in the room. But nice to have you here, John. So, uh, Dormammu, yeah, Starberry Shortcake is just packing blueberries and a tickle pickle. That so. would actually be an amazing comic book, like Fast Food Wars. And you have, like, all the different mascots <laughs> of the fact, like Burger King's running around with, like, Uzis or something, or a sword and a shield. And, like, Wendy's oh. got a crossbow. And <laughs> hey, you can bring back Ronald McDonald. Yay. Yeah. M- all the McDonald's gang, you got like you know the Hamburglar and yes, yeah, the, the, whole, the whole gang, the Fry Guys. Yeah. You know? oh my we God. all know who we already know who wins the fast food wars. Who's that? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, Taco demolition Bell. man foretold. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> but of course, you know Bertie from McDonald's would only be shot down by uh, by KFC by the Colonel. So yeah, oh yeah, the Colonel yeah. definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's she's already the first to go. So Carl's <laughs> Jr. have put out more uh training videos. <laughs> have an epic really showdown participating in the fast food wars. Yeah, yeah. sure to take Pop- proper munitions. Popeye and KFC <laughs> have an epic chicken battle. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there can only be one chicken vendor here, and then they're fighting. <laughs> Well, and then blow Long, me John down. Sil- Long John Silver shows up on his boat. Oh, let's go. My and you know what the battleground is? Montana's. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Arby's. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Oh, geez. I'd love to see that happen. Somebody should do a video on that. Yeah. Fast food wars. Let's get, uh, get enough people. And somebody's just secret weapon is a blast from the past. Orange Julius for the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a huge orange wave of orange Julius just drowning everyone in the slaughter of like orange mist. So god. oh my god, yeah, there we go. Fast food wars. Yeah, the true hero would be Pepto Lad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're all gonna oh need god. Pepto after this. I know it. Come to uh, Oh, do they do remember they have uh they have a Name uh Street Fighter clone PC game of a fast food fast food mascots <laughs> Ronald is way overpowered. <laughs> yeah, get your ass beat by a Mono McDonald. Oh my <laughs> I can God. believe that. Beat you sl- senseless with clown shoes. I'm gonna <laughs> get give you a happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Oh, uh, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Special moves. Colonel Sanders frozen chicken attack. Wendy the baconator. <laughs> Ryan yeah. throws ice cream <laughs> machine. And that's why it's broke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
That I <laughs> always broke. Damn it. Uh, John Reddle. Meanwhile, Jack in the Box is still in the box and doesn't want to come out. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. Burger King's uh, special move would be the Whopper. Oh, the Whopper attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to get you then, down then with you a Whopper it, uh... attack. <laughs> Then you make it regional and bring in Whataburger and Dairy Queen and oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, yep. Burger King and Dairy Queen have a child, and it turns out to be Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, Dairy yeah. Queen's cheeseburgers are the best. I'm sorry. But, oh my gosh, Dairy Queen cheeseburgers. They're pretty good. They are. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. So, oh man, and then of course you got combo attacks like Five Guys burgers and fries, or you know, <laughs> you know. Or you would have to have, you know, like uh, your your big your big heavy that comes out, and that would be like, you know, fat burger. So, yeah. yeah, there we go. And he's big like the uh, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stomping through the city. <laughs> I'm picturing somebody like Yokozuna. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, going to get you. Oh. Feel my monster belly oh, yeah. justice. The yeah. Starbucks mermaid Dormammu, yeah. So like, comes out like a big celestial being in the sky, and they all have to like oh, yeah. team up to fight Starbucks. Oh, <laughs> God. Nobody cares hey. about your overpriced coffee. Go away. <laughs> and burglar using chicken nuggets like ninja stars. Rabble, oh, <laughs> <laughs> rabble. So, oh my God. Oh crap! Yeah, the Titan. Uh, the last three minutes of Fast Food Wars, I've heard better ideas than in the last three MCU movies. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we are. We are now. Instead of Marvel, we are now the House of Ideas. So somebody I- hire us. Throw money our direction. Exactly. Pot Twins. You know that that first comedy show that's on X right now. I suggest you go check them out. Yes, hire us as writers. We have ideas. So we some of are, them are your, actually good. That's right. Some of them are actually good. So we are your one stop shop for everything pop. There you go. I'm going to trademark that. <laughs> so uh, the Japanese had some anime Colonel Sanders thing. Yeah, they also had a uh, 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 McDonald's anime kind of thing going on too. So I, I seem to remember um, a French uh, McDonald's commercial that was downright scary. I think I remember that. Had Somewhere, like bloodthirsty Ronald McDonald chasing down somebody and killing oh. him is oh, it was nice. insane. Oh, those French are just always like that. They're always yeah, angry. the French. Yeah, uh, French fries plus crossbow. Yeah, I can go. I can do that. I can get behind that. And hey, side by mommy, how's it going, man? Or for that man, sorry, lady, how's it going, you? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't want to confuse my pronouns and get canceled. Oh my god! Dorma would talk about Chihuahua throwing fire sauce packets. <laughs> Do oh it. yeah, Taco Bell has like an army of Chihuahuas, and they like unleash them like there's like thousands yeah. of Chihuahuas just like engulfing people, like the ghost from Lord of the Rings. They're just oh like, god, yeah. all over people, <laughs> like compies from Jurassic Park. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 it's important. Death by hot chocolate, hot coffee. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, God. like in medieval times, how they drop like the hot oil on them at the castle gates. They have like hot coffee. They have like the hot coffee yes. in there and they pour it on the, the invaders. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's burning. It's too hot. I get a caffeine rush, but the third degree burns. Ah, it's decaf. Ah. Hot- how did we even get on the subject of food now? My God, we're talking about uh, no idea. I, I think no it idea. was a comment by one oh. of your chat, like about uh, I Wendy's. Think so. I think it was the edge of time or something about oh, yeah, Wendy's. Yeah. And I kind of just derailed everything. <laughs> going everything on. else got so weird. <laughs> and, you know, just like, yeah. uh, should I become uh, Leslie Esther Brooks from Police Academy? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, you should. So I'm not. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Mahoney. Breathless Mahoney. Oh, yes. yes. Please, ma'am. Uh, yeah, Arby's barbecue sauce gun. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Heated hot chocolate Sunday fudge being boiled and poured over castle walls. Imagine how insane that would be. Uh, like. Oh, it's man. I'm just getting hungry. That's all for me. It's like, damn, I want to eat. Right? Yes, exactly. So back to Destro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the article. Back to the article. 
<laughs> well, we're all chattering away like idiots, talking about fast food, getting hungry Gentlemen, now. You know? Chicolini here may talk oh, like God. an idiot and look like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He uh, really is an idiot. Yes, we're just all a bunch of idiots at this point. <laughs> oh, Condiment man. Yeah, just on, on, on that side note, do you know Burger yes. King used to sell video games? And they're actually, I have one of them. You're actually, you, you're the king or you're other different and you ride on your yeah, motorbike around the thing. Oh game too, yeah. Yeah. There was like Sneak King. There was the race yeah, one. Yeah, yeah the oh, game. The, pretty good deal for like five bucks or something. It was like three games that were multiplayer. <laughs> I worked at McDonald's Kitchen. The flame sauce got shot the farthest. Oh my God. <laughs> really? Jeez. Uh, oh, oh, man. So anyway, Destro. <laughs> being everybody's favorite amoral arms dealer and ready to kill and destroy and stuff like that because that's what his name implies it's like know. real shit <laughs> exactly oh my god so waters as noted was the script writer for creature of the black lagoon adaption but what's really aggravating is when guys like this have such a fixation on criminal figures the editor promotes destro's mo as though it's something to celebrate which it's not. I don't consider villains favorites as though they're somebody to literally love. Heroes are whom I cherish. Exactly. You know, you're not supposed to exactly be rooting for the bad guy. See, that's the thing, right? Like, and, and oh God, like, and I had to go back to like the acolytes, but it's like, you know, we're supposed to be cheering for someone that's, wanting to kill the jedi like since when do we have to sympathize with bad guys no since, that's why they're bad since uh corella deville's mom was killed by dalmatians right, oh god right. yes exactly <laughs> that's why she hates dalmatians <laughs> oh, yeah root for the bad guys now yeah. come to the dark sympathy. side we have beer and pizza the dogs yeah, exactly. need sympathy like that, yeah destro needs sympathy <laughs> thanos hashtag thanos was right <laughs> yeah, that's oh my God. It's right. Uh freak, you know, because of course in this day and age, you know, uh bad is good and good is bad. So I guess yeah, we have to like uh, it's so stupid. It is so dumb. You know, he's an arms dealer. He goes around making weapons of mass destruction which kill people. And while we're on the subject of puppies, puppies also. <laughs> You know, yeah. His so, AK has a blunt, has a, a bayonet on the end. That's not for carving up cakes. That's for uh, you know dismembering people and filling them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's he's, he's basically, a villain. He's an ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's Pretty why he's all into good. Yeah. No, go. Yeah, no, go ahead. That's, you it, know, that's, it. that's it. That's it's it. pretty like, much his whole mo. <laughs> you know. We, we do like, like have like put villains up higher now because like the Joker is like, you know, people forget like he's a psychopath sometimes. And it's like we're kind of like worshiping him a little bit. And like I think like a Marvel one would probably be like Doctor Doom. Like Doctor Doom has a lot of fans, but he's oh, not right. like really a sympathetic villain. He's he's trying to rule the world and shit, you know, like yeah. he has a pretty evil, evil motivations. And so does Destro. Like that's what he wants to do. It's in his name. Like you said, like it's one off one letter off. No, yeah. exactly, right? <laughs> like the name kind of, I don't know, says it all right there. Mm -hmm. Destruction, Destro mm -hmm. is like not anybody making a connection here. <laughs> like I don't that doesn't this. like somebody you would have over for Sunday dinner. No, no, no. not really. So, you know. Uh, and the bayonet, that's not for slicing a turkey at Thanksgiving. No, yeah, that's a yeah. well-deserved tracheotomy or something like that at this point. So, you know, unless, of course, if he has puppies, then there'd be well-armed puppies. So, you know, because then everybody would be going, oh, cute puppies, as they rip your jugular out or something like that. Like he's so, sitting on a throne of, like, his dead victims. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah, you know? <laughs> Just a sea of corpses. I don't feel bad for this guy. <laughs> Here, look at the field of dead bodies that I have, and oh, see I wish that I they're plentiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so uh is this the end of john universe that people are looking forward to for all we know based on the potential nepotism involved along with the politics of the inside uh the assigned writers themselves sadly it may not be though it's far from surprising in this area uh era of where much entertainment's most famous franchises are being sent down the drain if and when the overseers make no attempts to keep diverse identity politics out of storytelling. Mm. So, you know what? I I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see uh, whether or not, you know, um, I don't know. For Scarlet, I'm looking forward to Scarlet. I really am. And yeah. I'm hoping that they don't write it in such a way where, you know, she's just basically strong female Mary Sue kind of character. I mean, I know she's supposed to be, you know, like trained military and all that. I get that, right? But you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, it's just written in such a way where it's actually good, not thrown in your face. Win, that I wins every fight that. easily, like goes through mm -hmm. no obstacles or struggles. Yeah, no. Barely yeah, at least get some, cut, yeah, get some cuts yeah. and bruises. Learn from a mistake or two, you know. <laughs> so, Justro is Jewish. He performs risks. Yes. So, <laughs> that's what that bayonet is for. So, uh, uh, yeah, is that a golden AK-47 Destro has? Uh, isn't that a famous bad guy in real life? Gaddafi, uh, African warlord. Um, I think so. I think I it was uh, Saddam Hussein. I'm pretty sure it's Saddam Hussein. Going by memory. Yeah, I think a so. A lot of rappers so. have fake ones, too, in videos. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a common trope now, almost. And it's like, yeah. 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 I think you're right, Pop. So it's uh, it'll be interesting So to see. But there's but, been villain comic books that are well done before. And then I'm going to go on. I'm, again, my favorite Spawn isn't a nice guy. I don't know. Like, he is no. kind of uh, anti-hero. I mean, he's yeah. not being yeah, yeah. Oh, I was about I mean, to say all this is coming out of the anti-hero trope from what the eighties, nineties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, like yeah, they're not a hero, but they're not a villain. They're an yeah. anti-hero. Exactly. I mean, I mean, Spawn killed people. That's for sure. Look at Billy yeah. Kincaid. <laughs> yep. And, but oh, Billy yeah. deserved it. He deserved the killing. He was a child thingy, and you know, and but it's it's you know he was never the nice guy by any means. No, and that was mm -hmm. controversially good. Oh yeah, 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 that whole issue. It was good. Uh, Titan says, "Well, today's villains are just marginalized by the patriarchy, or something." Yeah, yeah. poor, yeah. misunderstood, villainous Destro. people. <laughs> you only killed a hundred thousand, but villains. damn, you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, do I. Exactly. I miss good villains where they're evil. Like they're not just evil. Like there's one track, but like you, you, you want to see their downfall. You want to see them get a satisfying like comeuppance or their just desserts. You know and well, sometimes exactly. we don't even get that nowadays. No, you don't. You know, they're just well, they're just misunderstood. A few uh, a few years of jail time, and I'm sure they'll re rehabilitate. And they come out and they kill more people. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, that was a walk in the park. All five minutes of jail time. Let's mm. go. Yeah. Let's go bomb a third world country somewhere. You know. Uh, and all of a sudden, he Trump. just became a James Bond villain. Who would have thought? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to leave him in an easily escapable situation and assume it all went according to plan. What? <laughs> and then on top of that, they'll find a way to blame it on Trump or something like that. I'm so. President Trump, and I approve this message. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, because that's the way it'll go. I so, mean, so with there were freaking lasers. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. always the best. That's the sharks with lasers on their heads. And sharks them. with freaking lasers on them. <laughs> <laughs> we can get that, uh, That's no. bass. I are they <laughs> ill-tempered? <laughs> A lamprey. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They's ornery. But um, I thought, I thought, you know what? I'm going to include a little bit of other funny news in this because you know we're talking about strong female characters and stuff like that, and you know who can't get enough of those. Um, I just wanted to bring this up because I thought this was just too good to pass up. So apparently, uh, this from the Phantom Pulse, uh, Jennifer Lawrence <laughs> rumored. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you, yeah. finally, for <laughs> laughing out that. Um, Jennifer Lawrence, rumored to have passed on Universal's upcoming Jurassic World movie, and Scarlett Johansson in talks to Star and Set. So I guess Jennifer Lawrence won't be the first in this case. Yeah, she was going to um, lay the first dinosaur egg and make the first dinosaur. And the studio yeah, exactly. wasn't having it. What, what's going on there? Of yeah, course, my first <laughs> thought is how bad is this going to be if Jennifer Lawrence passes on it? <laughs> <laughs> And we have the answer. For the that, is a win. that is a win. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh my god. The movie's so bad. Jennifer Lawrence doesn't want to be in it. Exactly. <laughs> like I don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't know. Damn. I I I would r- much rather watch Scarlett Johansson than Jennifer Lawrence any day. No. You know? Oh, hundred times. Yeah. You can give me any Scarlett and anything anytime. Oh, yes. wait, I'm thinking aloud. Yes. No, that's okay. So you can be as <laughs> lowbrow as possible on this channel. So, um, yeah, no, I, I just I just find that Scarlett Johansson is just more likable than Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, 100%. Just, In reality, though, for it, she's way more likable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I just, just for some other reason, you know. Um, so there are rumors... That Jennifer Lawrence, oh, we're going to have so much fun with this, I think. That Jennifer Lawrence passed on Universal's upcoming Jurassic World movie, and that Scarlett Johansson is rumored to be in talks to the star in the film directed by mm-hmm. Gareth Edwards instead. Now, the Jurassic World series, born from the both iconic Jurassic Park movies of the 90s, has captivated audiences for decades with its blend of awe inspiring spectacles and heart pounding adventure. However, as with any long-running franchise, maintaining momentum and relevance over multiple installments can prove challenging. And this challenge has been particularly evident in recent years as the series navigates the balance between nostalgia and innovation. Yeah, well, that's kind of true because, well, the last movie didn't exactly do too well. Domination was garbage. It was that was it was it was total garbage. Total garbage. Locust. Have you bring back all the characters we love, but then sideline them to to deal with the locust problem? Yeah. I don't even remember the last movie. I must not have watched it. The bad guys genetically create locusts to destroy all the crops on the planet. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And the only way to solve dinosaurs. Yeah. Is is with dinosaurs <laughs> and Chris Pratt? He has a Jedi power where he puts his hand out and he could stop any dinosaur, not just raptors yes. this time. Any dinosaur yeah. gets immediately, you know, stopped like he's freaking Anakin in in, in the, the the arena in Attack of the Clones. He can just like hold his hand there and tame them instantly. Wow! Right. Yeah, and he te- yeah. he teaches it to the kids and like so. There's a scene where they're all just walking through a room yeah. with their hands out and the dinosaurs are staying back like like at the force field. <laughs> it's so true. Like this is so sad. This is where Jurassic Park has got to now. I know all the that's tension from sad. the first one, running from the raptors in the kitchen and stuff. Amazing. <laughs> all that's gone. You can just put your hand out and stop them now. Yeah, no, that's right. I said no. You you cannot come into my safe space. Okay, the dinosaur will wait. Yeah, it goes exactly. against the first one he was in because he trained the raptors doing that, and all of a sudden the other one seemed to know it for some weird reason. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay, it's like. It's like had me stop. <laughs> so, and yeah, no. it worked on every other dinosaur. It's like that he's never even tried it for. It's like, I never tried yeah, it. I know. I'll just stick my so hand dumb. out. I'll it's stick just... my hand out to this T-Rex and he'll be like, Oh, I know what that means. Just stop. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> yes, <What> master. <laughs> like <I don't. laughs> but yeah, humans it. doing something strange. Uh, I'm I'm confused. Oh, yeah, exactly. Man, that movie. So, yeah, wasn't Jennifer Lawrence the first woman to tame dinosaurs? Yep. Yeah, well, apparently, I guess she uh, uh, she didn't train them that well because Chris yeah. Pratt had to step in and yeah, like Appian with, said, basically the hand of with, power. When the mosquito was biting the dinosaurs, it it bit Jennifer Lawrence first. She was like a cave <laughs> woman, and then yeah. it bit the dinosaurs. So she got bit first, and then yeah, yeah, they, you know, stuck in the tree sap in the amber. That's right. Yeah, she was actually the dinosaurs' first meal. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. we owe That's it all it. to J Law. That's the ticket. That is. <laughs> and hail, Wes Kegel. Nice to see you here, man. Mm. Awesome that you're here. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So the tweet went out. 
uh jennifer lawrence uh reportedly passed on universal's upcoming jurassic world movie uh and scarlett johansson yeah uh so i'm guessing they're kind of like looking at her to hopefully maybe save this franchise in some way probably it's a reboot kind of, though from what i've read i did read on that they supposedly they're rebooting the entire thing with her it's now. a reboot now wow yeah, yeah i'm hearing it's going to be a reboot oh boy <laughs> I mean, that, question that mark? Be better, just because it's time to forget about the last couple movies because they done they done messed it up and gone fully yeah. off the rails. They did. Yeah, they did. I can't even remember the last one I watched. It's I have wow. seen them all, but the first one with Chris Pratt I liked, but then it went downhill from there. I find that okay. it kind of did. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. So. The second one when they when they kill the brontosaurus with the lava, they 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 make you watch as. It slowly dies from the fire yeah, and the lava, yeah. and it's the it's that first big dinosaur, you know, that Alan and um, uh, L- Laura Dern's character, the first the first one they see, you know, and they, they get all awestruck, yes. and it's like dinosaur, yeah. and then they make you watch the audience, like they know you're gonna be sad, it's like it's Aww. just it's just it's like uh, making you you know like trying to play with your emotions, it's jacked up. That's like, right. Watch yeah. watch this dinosaur die. You can't die. die. And it had to be a plant eater on top of that. It didn't, it, it, you know, it couldn't possibly be a carnivore. You know, and then it'd the, be okay if it was a carnivore, yeah. but if it was plant eater, no, forget it. And then the clone girl, because uh, PCR, there's a clone girl. They cloned oh, a girl. Of course there is. And her mom was uh, the first scientist, so she was actually the one that, that That's did right. it all. The, yeah. the Asian guy was just, you know, whatever. Yeah. She was better. Yeah. And so the clone girl releases all the dinosaurs into the world because they're clones mm-hmm. like her. So yeah. she literally causes the fucking apocalypse. <laughs> and gets and doesn't get any type of trouble. It's basically it. Uh, Cycle Man, yeah, I think they should reboot Jurassic Park and make it more based on the book. It was more sci-fi horror. Yes, I agree with you because actually, um, you know, Malcolm dies in the book, yeah. in the original book, and uh, I think the lawyer actually survived, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that's and... messed up if the lawyer survives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, right? Well, you know, evil is evil. So, yeah. um, Wes Cagle, who wants to do a lot of drinking at this point, so that's been a member for three months. Thank you, Wes Cagle. Chug it down because with everything that's coming out, I feel like drinking too. So, <laughs> yeah. oh and Titan, wait, if she if she was bit first, wouldn't they have cloned a bitch of source? Yep. Just thousands of Jennifer Lawrence's <laughs> running around, exactly. Yep. <laughs> and they'd all be fighting over who was the first clone. Like I came out oh, first. No, I did. <laughs> and then they cross over into Star Wars and have real Clone Wars. Oh, I was God. just thinking that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be doing the uh, Spider-Man 2099 kind of thing, pointing circle kind of thing. I was first. No, I was. Yeah, they're first. all point. Yeah, they're pointing the meme. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the real deal. Like, oh, right. Stormtroopers on the end of the battle on dinosaurs. Yeah, it's gone insane. Oh man, do it. Make it happen. so the latest buzz surrounding universal's forthcoming jurassic world movie centers on casting rumors and directorial choices now reports indicate that jennifer lawrence may have turned down a role while scarlett johansson is purportedly purportedly in talks to step into the spotlight under gareth edwards direction that these rumors have fueled speculation among fans and industry insiders alike, adding an air of anticipation to the franchise's next chapter. Now, Universal Pictures has wasted no time in fast-tracking production for the new installment, because I guess they have to make money somehow, uh, setting a release date of July 2nd, 2025. Wow. So a little over a year from now. They're going to be working on that thing vigorously Mm then. Dang. That soon. Yeah. I mean, this is fast. So this aggressive timeline reflects the studio's commitment to delivering fresh content to eager audiences while capitalizing on the enduring popularity of the Jurassic World brand. Moreover, the involvement of industry heavyweights such as Steven Spielberg and Frank Marshall as producers instills hope for the project's potential for success. I think people just want to see dinosaurs. I'm not sure if it's yeah, exactly yeah. the whole Jurassic World brand. I just yeah. want to see dinosaurs eat people. 
Yeah, I want it to be like the video game Dino Crisis. I don't know if you ever heard about that, but it's like a yes. Resident Evil clone, but with dinosaurs. And I think I think it would be great because like you could have Scarlett Johansson play the Regina character, who was like the female lead of the game, and she kind of had red hair. And I, I think Scarlett Johansson could pull off that look easily. And yeah, it's basically her and a small team of like you know special forces people go to an island that's inhabited by dinosaurs, and they get stuck there, and they have to you know fight to survive and things like that. That would be and you know, use like Isla, Isla Sorna or one of the islands from Jurassic yeah. Park. Yeah, and that, know, it, that was an underrated game series. I wish they there's talk oh. of them rebooting that eventually. I want I it so that bad. Cool. I want it to get. They're re-mashed. rebooting all the original Res Evils. They said they might reboot that one. So it's just yeah. uh, you're getting chased by raptors and the T-Rex and yeah. Oh, and hail, oh. Penny! Nice to see you here. Awesome that you're here. I'm glad that you made it. So, oh boy, uh, Penny. Just to let you know, or Cycle Man, or if you guys that have returned or just got here late, check out the stupid news in the beginning. I swear to God, you will not be disappointed. That's all I got to say about that. That's the only teaser you get. Uh, it makes you hungry. That's, <laughs> or it will make you hungry. Um, before we talk on food again. Um, Wes Gagel, yeah, are we going to be seeing some LGBT representation in these films? Can we get Megasaur- <laughs> Megasaurus? Yeah, I've already been doing a bunch of drinking. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, Why not at this point? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cycle Man Noni, uh, what are they calling it now? Jurassic Hood? Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, uh, Dormammu, I'll wait for them to have a talking dinosaur that spends 45 minutes explaining how they're vegan. <laughs> so basically barney yeah like or extend that scene from jurassic park 3 when he when he's having that dream on the plane and he looks at and the raptor looks at him and it's like alan and it, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah remember, and the raptor's <laughs> mouth moves and so it's like the raptor i was, I was like if, um thank god that that was a dream sequence so i'm like if that was real this movie is done zero oh, out of yeah. ten i'm done yeah. with jurassic park <laughs> Talking dinosaurs. I'm, I'm coming to get you. I'm gonna get you. Like imagine, like it would ruin it. Oh, you're hiding behind you know that what? door. I can open that door. So at this point, they might as well just make it Land of the Lost, like that yeah. old show from like the late '70s. Oh, oh man! Oh god! Stacks. Yeah, the Slee stacks. <laughs> yes. Do that. Might as well. Uh, yeah, I think Will made like a remake of Land of the Lost like ten years yes. ago or something like that. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, no, parking with dinosaurs, Jurassic parking lot. Yeah, let's do that. So, uh, oh, no Mila Jovovich, no Resident Evil. Man, oh, really? those, those movies went off the rails too. And they like, did. They, they, especially when they had her like a like a god. She had like godlike abilities, and then they cloned her with God of Yeah, God. there was like a yes. thousand of her with clones. I'm like, oh, so the threat's done. You just you just yeah. killed the threat of your entire franchise. Oh man! And then they had to like, kill all the clones off the next movie because they realized, oh wait, we made our main character too powerful. There's no threat on Earth that could possibly do anything to her. Oh no, exactly. It Whoops. was way overdone. Especially, then. I still enjoyed yeah. them, but yeah, they were really. Awesome. There you go. Titans got an idea. I'm so tech of these endless franchises. Would love something like Dino Riders. That would be pretty damn cool. Or Turok the movie. That that would. Oh, yes, man. he would basically Turok be writing Dino dinosaurs. Riders. Oh, yeah. that'd be so cool. Turok, Turok that'd Dinosaur be Hunter. Too good. Let's Turok, go. Yeah. That'd well, be too that? good of an opportunity because they would bring in the rest of the Valiant comic universe in my mind. Because have you seen, did you see Prey, the new Predator movie? Yep. Well, the, yep. remember the brother that, of the main girl? He, yes. he looks like Turok. Like he would be the perfect casting choice for yes. Turok. Hollywood, if you totally. need a Turok, look at, watch Prey. He, he's in there, the brother character. He yeah. likes Turok perfectly. Isn't uh, that the series that Vin Diesel is working on with them? Like, isn't he in the game itself? Oh, oh, Ark. Well, he did Blood Ark. Yeah, yeah. A little bit different, a little bit different, but Ark, yeah, but yeah. he yeah. wants to make that into a movie, I heard. So it's yeah. like, eh. He was in Bloodshot. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Dormammu, rom com, Jurassic Parker, Lewis Can't Lose. <laughs> 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 I bet someone already did an abridged version of Jurassic Park <laughs> with talking dinos. Yeah, probably. So, uh, Wes Kegel, uh, I cool with Jurassic Park generating into Land of the Lost so we can't lose, uh, so we can get ca- uh, Chaka. Oh, yeah, 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 from Land of the Lost. Frig. Uh, a movie where dinosaurs survived the ice age, Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
Don't make me break out of those novels that I freaking found online. Oh I have a movie idea for dinosaurs. I always say, if we look at the, the dragons, they derived from dinosaurs. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. When you look at the mixture of what well, a dragon is, it's a combination of multiple different dinosaurs. But yet it was recorded in history long before we discovered dinosaurs. Anybody ever wonder that? Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Dragons versus dinosaurs. No, really, I actually have. So, um... <laughs> So behind the scenes, David Coep, uh, Coep, <laughs> is trying to up, yes. <laughs> and he's got a high-quality plastic katana ready to fight these dinosaurs and dragons. <laughs> okay, okay. So that being said, that being said, you, you made me do it. Yeah, because if we're going to be doing rom-coms, let's do something like this, Ooh. maybe. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah. So with a, and the alien a, in the background, <laughs> or or Dino Pim by uh, Penelope. It's, oh my lord! Exactly. <laughs> so, he's got a shiny. I want tooth. Dino Pim to come That's out maybe finally, or something like that. Like, yeah, there we go. Or Ravage. Yep. Or or Ravage by Triceratops. So <laughs> yeah. there was that a uh, Velocipaster where that like that somebody. priest Taken guy by T Rex. There we go. <laughs> oh wow! What is going on? Yes. He, I kept his uh, hands, he kept his hands to himself. That's uh, or, cool. Yep. Pterodactyl Cheer Me Gay by Hunter Fox. <laughs> yes. What the hell? You know. Whoa. Or or how about how about wet hot <laughs> Allosaurus summer? So hot wow. dinosaur action the way you like it. She was a country girl looking for excitement. He was an apex predator theropod. <laughs> so, oh my god. Oh. oh my god! Yep. If we're gonna be doing stuff like that, then uh, then yeah, yeah. Dude, so, don't give them ideas. They, uh, they, they already anyway. want. Them. <laughs> yeah, because I think like there was it. a Velocipaster, like where the pe- the pastor yep. guy can like transform I, I, into a, ra- a raptor. I remember that. That was such a <laughs> yeah, that terrible was movie. Such a bad movie. Oh my god, bad movie. <laughs> so, Never saw exactly. It. Jurassic Park and the Furious. Who needs gas when you got dinosaurs as family? Right. I could see Vin Diesel as a caveman <laughs> with right. a club. That would work. Um, let's see. Let's see. And Vince Bomac. Uh, then... Well, he did. If you think about it, you know, who says they were uh, full size adult dinosaurs? So we still have alligators uh, and crocodiles. Ah. That's right. Jurassic Park and Prejudice. <laughs> so, <laughs> my God, I'd love to see that one. Still waiting for the Simpsons version, uh, Generic Park. Yeah. So, wrong title. I uh, should have been uh, the Pterodactyl. Te- I get it. I get it. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, we're not sidetracked. We're totally <laughs> off the rails. Exactly. That's right. <clears throat> so, where dino yeah i'd be okay with that too so uh and that's right yeah chickens don't count exactly chickens never count so pff, the fact that they're chickens anyway i hope you're entertained x <laughs> unless you're playing skyrim if you kick a chicken every city will hate you after that for some time. that's right oh man Especially and like rumble in, in zelda in zelda when you'd attack a chicken all the chickens would become aggro and they'd all attack you and kill you <laughs> think, like immediately <laughs> I remember, my, but I didn't know what happened. My friend's like, attack that chicken, see what happens. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll see. And then you attack it, and just like you get swarmed by chickens, just death by a thousand pecks. That's right. It's what happens wow. in Zelda all the time. You know? <laughs> yep. Don't attack chickens in games. No, that thing. No. Like I said, Skyrim, the whole city, all of a sudden, the whole village starts hating you. It's like, what? I just. It's like all I wanted to do was eat chicken. So yeah. well. Well, the camera is upset done it. at the treatment think, of that chicken. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think Assassin's Creed even played a joke on that where you fight a chicken boss on an island. There's like an island with like a big chicken and oh my you God, fight it. No. Yeah, Jeez. and you got Family Guy where Peter fights the chicken like 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so behind the scenes, David, David Co. Oh, my God. oh, yeah, the article. Yeah, the article. Yeah, the article. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, Meanwhile, back to the article at hand. Um, the screenwriter responsible for crap, crap, 
crapping, crafting the <laughs> narratives of the original Jurassic Park and in sequel, The Lost World Jurassic Park, has been tapped to pen the script for the upcoming film. Uh, Co-op's return to the franchise signals a desire to recapture the magic of the early films while infusing the I, I am so Jurassic Parked out. Oh my god, especially after those novel covers. Uh, while infusing the latest installment with new energy and excitement. Now, in the director's chair, speculation swirls around David Lynch, known for his work on the action packed blockbuster like Deadpool 2 or Hobbs and Shaw and John Wick. And Likes' proven track record in delivering high-octane thrills and visually stunning sequences make him a natural fit for the Jurassic World universe, or so at least we hope. Moreover, his involvement in the highly anticipated adaption of The Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling, which is actually out now, underscores his versatility and ability to tackle diverse genres. So I'm actually kind of interested in seeing that. So the fall guy with Ryan Gosling. So I'm, I'm thinking it's a remake of the old 80s show, the ball guy. I'm hoping right. maybe. Yeah, I think it is as long as it doesn't get the Magnum PI treatment. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Right. So while details regarding the plot and cast of the new Jurassic world movie repa- remain shrouded in mystery. One thing is for certain. The filmmakers are keen to chart a new course for the franchise. Colin Trevorrow, the visionary behind Jurassic World Dominion, has uh, expressed a desire to shift the focus away from dinosaur-centric plots and towards character-driven storytelling. Why? Why would you do this? As he shows a picture of Jennifer Lawrence. Why? (laughs) Mm. no we want dinosaurs see here's the problem with that right there okay uh, <laughs> yeah please do so an heiress to work oh my god the first draft yes. park did it perfectly it balanced the good character work with alan and everything yep. and like yeah. his, like he didn't like kids and then he ended up spending time with the kids like it was like this perfect balance yeah. yes and yeah, John Riddle. Yeah, uh, there's a Fall Guy movie that's out now. Yep, kind of scary. Trailer looked fun, but you know, as trailers go, um, who knows if it's actually good? I don't. It could know. be a popcorn so, flick, maybe. So you never. Maybe know. it could. It, it could be. So, but here's the thing: when when you're when you're making a movie f- about you know that's that's in a certain franchise, right? Like in this case, dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, right? Or if it's, let's say, another franchise that's had multiple movies, like pretty much in the same same vein as Transformers, the live action movies there, right? Here's the problem, okay? Too much focus on human characters, all the time i have seen it throughout all the transformers movies whether mm-hmm. you had like yep. you know megan uh <clears throat> megan fox in there or shia labeouf or Sam you Whitwicky. had you know yeah or you had you know marky mark in it um kate you know. yeager god the names i know right <laughs> it's like look we don't want to watch these movies for the people, the humans no. in it. Sure, it's, it's great the to giant have robots. That's right. I want to see the character development of gigantic 30 foot tall robots. Mm. I want to see dinosaurs eating people left, right, and center. I want them seeing bashing vehicles. I want to see flames. I want to see, you know, two giant robots in a in a death match between Megatron and Optimus. I don't want to see the the you know like the mishaps of you know the human character that's basically should be on the sidelines. Right. Right. I want, I want, I want like, I can. Oh go ahead. Oh yeah I was like I was about to say I want like the first five or ten minutes of the Bumblebee movie. Oh yeah, the war on Cybertron. Yeah, yeah that, that yeah. was great visuals. The, and perfect Gen, Gen One. That was perfect. Exactly. One of the best balances of characters and humans was Godzilla minus one. I find it did it to a T because there wasn't too much human stuff, but there was just enough that you get invested. But they also talked yeah. about the monster. I find that yes. was so good. Just just 
perfect balance. It was like, oh. right. And Hale's mm. rocking the brave. Uh, I don't know. I didn't mind the Megan Fox shots. Nobody well, hell, no, Fox nobody shots. does that. No, you know, no. Like, damn, but um, <laughs> but no, I, I always said that too. There should have been more of the Transformers. There wasn't, yep. enough, just a oh, yeah. If you edited just the human stuff, you'd have an entire movie just on that stuff alone, well, yeah. And then 45 minutes of Transformer stuff. Yeah, would be shorter than the human stuff easily in exactly. every one of his uh, movies. Yeah, yeah. so frustrating. Like, you know, that's, just... that's like Malcolm tapping on the camera lens, going, uh, "Are there dinosaurs here? Yeah, this dinosaur park. Are we going to see dinosaurs? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There exactly. will be dinosaurs on the dinosaur uh, dinosaur <laughs> tour. It's like, I hate that man. <laughs> <laughs> Are there going to be that's transformers why... in the Transformers movie? Hello. Yeah. That's right. Thank and that's you. why he got eaten in the book. Yeah. So, <laughs> God. But no, you know, like, like that's, that's what I want out of a movie. I don't want yeah. like a whole bunch of sure, you know, maybe make interesting little character arcs, maybe throughout the movie or something like that. Maybe, uh, you know, like a group of them get separated or something like that. But, you know, I, I am more focused on, you know, how they get out of danger Rather, rather than fulfilling some sort of character development arc, mm. that's what I want, right? Like, the, like the tree sequence in the first movie when the, when they're like stuck in the tree and then the yeah the rover is like following down the tree. It's like so intense and so perfectly put together. Exactly, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and there's no dinosaurs in that part, right? Particular, but it's still like really well put together. Exactly, you know. And then, and then the big punchline at the end is like. Well, we're in the car again. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect delivery. The electric right? fence and like the tension where she's turning all the power grids back on and he's trying yeah. to get over the fence in time and they're cutting back and forth. <laughs> Gap. Then they can sell Jennifer Lawrence Jurassic Park vibrator called the <laughs> Velociraptor. Oh my God. No. Mm. Oh, my fair turret. <laughs> my God. Jeez. My fur triceratops. Oh my Jesus. Uh Raptor snowballing in Jurassic oh, yeah. Park clerks. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Snowballing. Just Jurassic just... Parks and Recreation. Wait, we already got Chris Pratt. Yep. <laughs> He's there. He's standing there somewhere with his hand and, out. Uh, wait, wait. Yes. I command you to wait. Hands Is that a picture from Jennifer Lords' first audition? Yep, she's it's looking at it. Harvey Weinstein over there. Like, God, what did I get myself into? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a movie games. about dinosaurs that's like cats, only good. <laughs> oh, imagine! Yeah, the yeah. dinosaurs all sing. They all have their own songs, and they oh, God. <laughs> a musical. Jurassic oh. Park, the musical. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Written by Joss Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that shit. However, <laughs> God, no. <laughs> the horror. The horror. <laughs> just, just kill me now, please. Make it end. Oh God. <laughs> however, however, despite uh, Trevorrow's ambitions, Jurassic World Domination received mixed reviews upon its release. While the film performed admirably at the box office, grossing over one billion worldwide, some critics lamented its sprawling en ensemble cast and reliance on nostalgic callbacks to the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Well, I mean, it worked, so, you know, not going to argue there. So, enter Jurassic 4, a fresh start for the franchise, and a return to its roots, spearheaded by David Coop. A film promises to deliver a self-contained survival narrative that, har that harkens back to the tension and excitement of the original Jurassic Park. That's by what I want. That's what I want, exactly. By ensuing ties to previous ensembles and embracing a new ensemble cast, Jurassic World 4 aims to carve out its own identity within the franchise while sidestepping the pitfalls of its predecessor's convoluted canon. So, knowing Hollywood, though, and its tired proclivity for wokeness, we should probably prepare for the new Jurassic World to feature another stunning and brave girl boss in Scarlett Johansson. So. No, just make her like Laura Dern's character. Like, write her just like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, and if that happens, well, then again, you got to ask the question: What do you think of Jurassic World, starring Scarlett Johansson as girl boss over Jennifer Lawrence? That's good idea. Yeah, yeah, good start. Yeah, yeah. I do not want to see this 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 cow faced sad sack of a woman. Just just give me lots of dinosaurs that eat people, and I'm okay with Scarlett Johansson. So you don't at least she create- can act. You don't have to create new freaking dinosaurs that make up goofy ass names either. Indominus no. Rex, and he could turn invisible like a chameleon and all this. Oh shit. my god, that was such bullshit. Yeah, they didn't stick with the traditional dinosaurs. It's, it's enough no. of them. You can tell the stories just with them and alone. This was the Indominus Raptor. <laughs> they literally did that. They're like, I know. So now we're going to make a super raptor. <laughs> I just sounds Fans convoluted, love even for a fantasy movie. Yeah, after. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, John Rental, Indiana, <laughs> Indiana Jurassic Park, and the Temple of Lunch. Vince <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> back Jurassic Park roots. Do I, I mean need to say what came to my mind? <laughs> I really thought like Domination was going to go into like uh, uh, Turok territory, where like a T Rex yeah. has like a laser beam on his head and like rocket launchers and like all these <laughs> extra attacks. <laughs> Like, a, like it basically becomes like a cyborg dinosaur. Like just lean into the ridiculousness. Let's just go full wild with it. Damn it, I want that now. Chris Pat, see it. Out, stop cyborg dinosaur and it just shoots them with the laser. Well, if that's the case, that then, again, bring out dino riders then. You know, you yeah, might as we're... well then. Shit. You, you, mentioned, know? you mentioned sharks with lasers. Give us T-Rexes with lasers. Simple. I want T-Rexes with lasers and I want mm-hmm. them now. So I, I'd be incredibly happy with my, a Valiance yeah. Comics universe, but I know uh-huh. it'll never happen. Yeah. Like T-Rex, like Cyclops from the X-Men. So he's got like the red, he's got the visor and he can... <laughs> 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 and he's just blasting people. Oh my God. And can, he can heat like, up his lunch. You're right. Yes. <laughs> Yes, micro- <laughs> microwaves it. <laughs> Where's that chippy pop popcorn? I can't reach it. My arms are too small. And then you take so- it to the next step and go Jurassic Park Pacific Rim. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Rick or Steve. Yeah, we should make original films. No more Star Wars, Star Trek, Fast, and the family Jurassic Park. You know what? In, in a sense, I, I agree with that. They've been... You know, it's to the point where they've just been done to death. Well, they're soaking it. And they're yeah. killing it in the same vein. So it's like, eh. Beating a exactly. dead horse comes to mind. Yes, it does, isn't it? So just keep on beating that that rotten, fleshed out, hollowed out core of a, of a, of a body. <laughs> then when their stocks tank, uh, we can just buy them up pennies on the dollar or uh, yeah. when they have like a Dollar sale and the <laughs> their socks. <laughs> uh, Star Wars. Who will buy that? I'll buy that for a dollar. MCU. Oh, uh, exactly. I don't want to touch that. And now in this corner, going for fifty cents on the dollar, the whole entire MCU. So, so MCU. Do I have to? IDW is looking rather attractive right now. Yeah, exactly. I'll give you twenty five cents. So, Rocco the Brave. Anyone else done with sci fi and ready for funny rom com movies? I'm done with the reboots. Yeah, you know what? I don't blame you. Yeah, Strawberry, <laughs> Strawberry Short Shave. <laughs> oh, I mean, what, what? They're rebooting the Crow, which I'm still uh, by. The the Raptor Whisperer. <laughs> Devil make Devil May Crow. Like yeah, the devil may cry guy <laughs> raptor on a hot tin roof. Oh my god, <laughs> Jur- Jurassic Park Greece, <laughs> close encounters of the Jurassic kind. <laughs> mm. I would watch that. Oh god, or like Megatron and Beast Wars, T Rex on roller skates. Yes, exactly. Do that, <laughs> dinosaur on a spaceship. Oh, yeah. Taken That's by just, Doctor Who already. Yeah, <laughs> just what came to mind. <laughs> Close encounter. Wrapped your feet. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Do a remake of Happy Feet and just wrapped your feet. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson narrating. Oh God, yeah. That'd be hilarious. Oh my God. You know, a raptor ate me one time, right? <laughs> a motherfucking raptor ate me. Enjoy yeah. my movie, Raptor Feet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you like uh, happy feet, you're going to love raptor feet. 
Psycho Man, you know what? Yeah, I think so. I Western think we need with more dinosaurs. Man. You're right. West, yes. Yeah. Oh, you know what they should do? Uh, it was like an older comic. Um, and I think in the early 90s, they did a cartoon series of it. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Remember that Vaguely. one? Vaguely. Huh? Vaguely. Yes. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Debbie does a T-Rex. <laughs> Shit. Oh, uh, coming to Disney. Bigger, Jurassic longer Park. than the original. <laughs> Dino, dinos on a plane. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of these motherfucking dinosaurs on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> motherfucking plane. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, uh, once upon a time in Jurassic Park. <laughs> they just write themselves. <laughs> they do. Jurassic Somebody Park take only with this Boulder. show and put Boulder. it in an awesome. AI art generator. There, yes, that would make it happen. Yep. Uh, Jurassic Park only with polar bears because Snorter Poop is this awesome. Yes, he is. So I miss him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, will the raptors be trans? Yeah, they probably will be. Yeah. Well, all the dinosaurs were technically in the original Jurassic Park. Oh, that's right. They were all female, right? Frog DNA mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. yeah and, like, the and like the DNA let them change sexes, like when they needed to, to adapt to yep. survive. Because exactly. Malcolm was right. Yep. Life will find a way. Life will find a way. Reservoir Raptor. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Are you a raptor? He's not a raptor. Oh my I promise god. You he's not a raptor. That's right. <laughs> oh jeez. But yeah, there you go. Um Honey, I shrunk the raptors. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the raptors. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go in the yard. There's a bunch of raptors shrunk down in there. Oh, god, okay, imagine? instead of instead of Pokemon, um, it would be Pokey Raptors. Pokey Raptor. Oh jeez. Parker Posey singing dinosaurs on a plane. <laughs> I thought that was her. <laughs> uh, hey, Stale Messiah, Boondock Raptors. <laughs> hey, there's still a Boondock 3 coming out. They're making it. There out. is. There is. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm gonna have to, which I'm gonna have to get to pretty soon. So um, well, that being said, see now we've done a full show and we probably traumatize the people on x long enough which is okay <laughs> now you know what you're getting into so and the people on rumble as well so because apparently according to this i got 39 people watching on x wow that's pretty neat and 18 people on uh, on on the youtube so ah. thank you all for watching i really really appreciate it you guys so ha <laughs> hacksaw rich raptors oh my God. i gotta just get one more one more raptor uh, episode four, a new raptor. <laughs> the, the spy who raptured me. <laughs> oh my god, Robin Hood, raptors and tights. <laughs> my name is Bond, Raptor Bond. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. So, uh, anyway, that being said, as we're reaching the end, so of the, the never ending raptor, <laughs> never ending raptor. Oh my god. A fistful of raptors. <laughs> for a few raptors more. Yeah, for a few raptors uh, more. A few raptors more. So. The good, the bad, and the raptors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is going to go on forever. I know it is. But I got to end it, unfortunately. Uh, geeky Classic left a song when you got a plug, man. Oh, <laughs> Hurry most, before this gets out of control. The <laughs> most sidetrack show we've ever done, and I love it. So, um, yeah, oh, you guys so are awesome, awesome. that you're watching. Yeah. The, the comments are amazing. Um, what am I oh, going? I got geez. episode three. Me and Jessica, we actually worked on it. She came up with it. It's going to be the ethics of AI cr or humans creating AI. It's quite okay. interesting, actually, especially with oh. Elon Musk releasing AI robots next year into the public. They're, and oh, they're yeah. going to be under under twenty thousand dollars per robot. So you can see them working at Walmart, replacing jobs there, replacing jobs at your grocery store, everywhere. They're going to be in the next year or two. And robots will exist in the public. Mm, I know it's quite interesting. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's why me and Jessica are talking about it, and we're going to talk about the ethics of it. She's actually against like it shouldn't take humans' jobs, but we should work together. I'm like I agree. So they're going to happen either way. So, but eh, it's going to be interesting. Going to be interesting. So uh, we're going to. Record that this week, and we'll get that up by Saturday. So. Nice, nice. 
Uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Brontosaurus. There we go. <laughs> no, yeah. here come more. No, <laughs> we're married with raptors. I can't. I gotta pay love attention. Love and family. Love and family. Good. <laughs> uh, Revenge of the Raptors. Yeah, the Raptor Labyrinth. <laughs> oh, Raptor, where are thou? <laughs> Jurassic side story. <laughs> it just keeps going on it does. and on. It does. We should open like a B movie studio and just do all of these. <laughs> Being uh, wrapped hey, I, I, I'm oh all for it. God. I'm in film. We're <laughs> learning to do film. I'm doing it. So, yay. So, I have Flag a simulator. So, be a raptor. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Unintelligent design. Hey, you managed this in time. Well, yes. sort of. You know, we'll have to catch all of this on the rewatch. <laughs> Oh, this episode promise... should just be downloaded into an AI movie generator. Exactly. All these ideas will come to life. Yep, that's right. Yep, we... we are now living yeah. in Blade Runner times. We are so. <laughs> oh my God, Raptor! That's Magnolia. my favorite film. So yeah, <laughs> back back to the... Marty, we got to go back to the future, Marty. Your kids, Marty. Yeah. They're raptors. <laughs> it's the raptors, Marty. We have to go back and save them for the raptors. <laughs> Game of Raptors. Oh, jeez. When you play the Game of Raptors, you either get eaten or, or you do the eating. Raptor to the future. <laughs> like, Jesus. Appion. Oh, what man. Do How do you tell that? Going? I know. Uh, I know. Gonna watch some more X Men. Try to finish it today with Padawan B at three. So, I'm like 30 minutes. And then. Um, Play more like Kingdom Hearts, I guess. I'm trying to play through those games now that I finished nice. Final Fantasy. But other than that, I don't really have anything else really planned. Okay. Oh, for now, yeah. Nice. Kind nice. of been doing a lot and just kind of taking yeah. a step back a little bit now. And you have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. So take a breather. Fifth <laughs> Raptor. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme <laughs> being. <laughs> <laughs> Four raptors stand here, and in the middle, the main raptor. <laughs> the fifth raptor. <laughs> yeah, instead of 12 monkeys, I see what you did there, Snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so, similar butterfly said it gets from the raptors. The raptor fly effect. <laughs> oh, God, the raptor family. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I like the fifth raptor. Oh. I think that one. That one that by one. Awesome. That would be so cool. <laughs> Blade Raptor. <laughs> Blade Raptor. <laughs> are you Pop a real those... raptor or are you a replicant raptor? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we had a dream of a unicorn. <laughs> oh, jeez. Much ado Much about 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 about... <laughs> <laughs> Breaking Raptor. <laughs> Eisen Raptor. Oh, jeez. Much ado. That one won for me. The in the raptor. Oh, God, yeah. Wong <laughs> <laughs> Fu, and thanks for everything. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dances with That's raptors. Fair. I like that one. Dances with raptors. <laughs> I need you to go infiltrate the raptor clan and become one of them. Be a raptor. Oh, God. Oh, raptor zombies would be very, very bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> raptor and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the line, the closet, and the play cat magazine. Yeah, there we go. A <laughs> clockwork raptor. <laughs> oh, raptor, oh. where are they? Oh, jeez. So <laughs> 2001 a space raptor. <laughs> It'll never Those end. The, the, rapture, the two raptors. We should get to Pop. <laughs> okay, so Pop goes to Republic. What do you got going on? I don't know at this point. <laughs> Undercover raptor with, a, with an afro. <laughs> this will go on all week. It will. It will. Wednesday. Oh my, my Wednesday live stream. I'll do something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pop culture raptor. Pop culture raptor. <laughs> Oh goodness! Oh, yeah, something. Uh, I'll talk about TV shows I like. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll think of something yeah. Wednesday. Then uh, oh, Saturday, yeah. uh, more comic books. I'll think of something new for comic book Saturday. <laughs> okay. Once once I recover from this ep episode, I'll be able, <laughs> I'll be in my right mind, maybe. Oh shit! You probably, if you're lucky. So. 
<laughs> Mad Max, <laughs> the Road Raptor. <laughs> what, yeah, geez. yeah. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, you can go buy Pop Culture Raptor. Yeah, <laughs> Pop Culture Republic. Uh, I'm up to 57 subscribers now. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Uh, <laughs> as my slow rise in subscriberships. There we go. Very cool. Are you a human? No, I, I identify as a raptor. Yes. <laughs> the raptor relief crusader. There we go. So. Oh, man. Oh, God. Well, guys, okay. It's been fun. <laughs> I got to get going. And... Yeah, I'm going to take off as well. <laughs> There's just so many good ones. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Raptor dynamite. Uh, Raptor dynamite. <laughs> Grumpy old Raptor. Wood. I would make that. That has to be made. Just oh, two Raptors complaining about each other. <laughs> remember, remember, when, remember when our food didn't run away so fast? <laughs> <You're extra laughs> remember when it was easier. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, yes. Okay, so everybody in the chat, you guys, as normal, are awesome. Thank you very much for being part of this channel. I really, really appreciate it. Check out everybody yeah. that's on this <laughs> channel because I'm sure that they would enjoy their side splitting as much as mine are right now. Yeah. So there we go. Um, yeah, so that being said, um, yeah. Please, on your way out, like and subscribe, whether you're on Rumble, whether you're on X, whether you're on the YouTubes, and spread this channel around. Oh, my God. <laughs> As we slowly return to normality. That's right. Celtics versus the Raptors, but with real Celtics and real Raptors. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, That'd be um, a <laughs> That being said, if you guys can uh, can share this stream, whether you're on YouTube or X or Rumble, doesn't matter to me because uh, yeah, we're almost at a thousand subscribers here on Rumble and almost at 150 on wow. uh, on on Rumble and uh, and at this point on X, I have the faintest idea how many people are following me, but I appreciate it all. But what and a great first impression for X! I know, right? <laughs> it's about time. So, totally off the rails on this one. It's like, yeah. I did. So to all of you guys watching this on X, welcome to your baptism of fire, or in this case, raptor teeth. So go get a Carl's Jr. burger and um, and tell them you saw their, uh, their handy-dandy uh, employee videos on this channel. So I'm sure that they'd appreciate it as well. <laughs> so that being said to everybody out there, uh, we will see you on Frantic Fridays. And also don't forget uh, to check out uh, Rank or Steve's channel uh, over there on Manorama. So uh, which is going to be uh, on Rumble as well. Link is there in the chat for you guys to check out. And uh, probably tonight uh he might be also simultaneously broadcasting on youtube as well so we'll Ooh. see what happens there yeah exactly so i think he just might take a chance and do that so we you know talked about it and uh yes sex lies and raptors that's right <laughs> so so to everybody out there i hope you had a wonderful time listening to the show check out everybody here on this channel uh, we will see you back on friday for frantic fridays and to everybody out there we say See ya!